What's going on, friends? Guess what? It's Vape Stew Friday, and we have a very special guest here for you today. Matt from Suck My Mod is here to join you. Eh, join us. You? Us? Me? I'm in a dark cave of, uh, of variable uh, solace and fortitude, and I'm here just for you guys. No interruptions tonight. It's all Vape Stew. Sit back, relax, grab your apple juice, and uh, we're ready to go. What's up, guys? Say what's up to the Stooges and all the lovely new people in the chat. Boy! <laughs> what's up? Hi. I didn't realize we had to have so much energy for this intro. <laughs> you guys really <laughs> stepped it up once we went live. Yeah, yeah man. You know, you do you YouTube, you know, just got to be exciting for everybody. <laughs> so I'm being told that we're only getting sound in the left ear. Is that right? Not for me. I mean, not, not for, for you me. guys. They like messing with us, Stan. Well, I like hope you know that. Stan. Yeah. Is yep. that what's going on? Yep. Yeah. 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 Michelle the other day was was messing with me on my live stream when I was doing a doing a review. I was in the middle of a review and she was like, "Can't your audio's bad, Demo? Audio's bad." And then I was, <laughs> "Oh, what the hell?" And I got super frustrated. And then uh, and then everyone was like, "Nah, she's messing with you. Nah, she's messing with you." And then it it went, "Yeah, whatever." It was. It was <laughs> Well, they planned this this stuff out in in Discord it's before. It's all in our Discord server, yeah. <laughs> that's not very nice, you guys. I just want to <laughs> say that's kind of jacked up. But uh, anyway, so tonight we have a very special guest. He's down here. Say what's up, special guest. What's up? Thanks for having me, guys. Very very cool. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, tell us a little bit about what you're vaping on tonight? We're gonna go around the circle here. Okay, first off, I have the Karma RDA on the Pulse 80 watt. And what liquid am I using in this? Some uh, Sunday Supper. It's like a uh, apple uh, butter biscuit. And then I have the Dole Dime Mods Nudge 22. This little drip tip I found that matches pretty damn well. And in this one, I have Lemon Frit. Is it phrase? Do you guys know phrase? I have no idea. Phrase? Phrase? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's go with that. So those are the only two setups I have working right now. I'm in right in front of me. Very cool. Right, very pick, cool. Pick someone to go next. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Just Right. All right. How about it, folks? Mr. Just Right one. Damn sure checking back in with you guys on this wonderful Friday evening. <laughs> that was energy for you, wasn't it? <laughs> First off, I'm rocking my dual dime with the dead rabbit up top. Inside of that, I am rocking the uh, King's Crest Don Juan Reserve. That's the uh, chocolate pecan pie. It's freaking phenomenal. Love that stuff. Secondly, I am rocking my uh, Defiant Designs TS with my Nudge 22 up top and a recurve drip tip. Black bottle, stainless steel contacts. Inside of that, I got cuts. What is it? Deep Cuts by Vinyl and Vapor. Side B. I love this stuff, guys. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Side A, but Side B is all for me. Thirdly, I'm rocking that Wodafo Rig Mod Collaboration, the Flux, with the Flow Pro Mesh Coil sub -ohm Tank up top. Inside of it, Hometown Heroes Legit. And this is the Sweet Lemon Bar. If you're a fan of lemon bar, this is what you need to try. Let it steep a little bit, and it really comes to life, folks. That's what I'm rocking tonight, guys. I do have a couple other setups in front of me. Uh, the Nudge 22 on the Nudge Box. The Nudge 24 on the Nudge Box. And another Nudge on top of this one here. You know, I just did that for, you know, obvious reasons. Thanks for the love, buddy. <laughs> you dust those off for me? No, nah, man, I actually use my Nudge 22, like, religiously. It's one of my favorite RDAs. It really nice, is. Nice. Uh, I'm going to throw this one to Stan. All right. Uh, do you guys hear me on both channels now, maybe? No. Is this better? Just my right. You're fine, dude. <laughs> Every, well, no, actually, it's it was true. I, I went back and I listened to it while you guys were talking, and I was only on the right channel, so. Um, okay. Well, I switched the line input, so hopefully that fixed it. 
I am vaping tonight on the Dreamer. My my camera's in a different location because I was messing with them. On the Dreamer stainless steel with the Phobia RDA. Nope. Only stands only on the left. Oh well. Um and inside that I am rocking uh, where to go? Where to go? Ah crap. That's gonna suck when I have to read it. Um the black the blackberry what's it called? Damn, where's all my juice at? I'm like not set up right now. Oh there it is, That's Jam Monster. Is something new? No. Black <laughs> I'm getting anxiety and freaking out, guys. I'm freaking out. Um so the Blackberry Jam Monster. Okay, that stuff's delicious. I'm also rocking on something I got brand new today. The uh I have a couple of broadsides, but I've been wanting that black aluminum setup because I mean just look at it. And then I put my little fancy button that my wife gave me for Christmas on there. And uh, it's just it's fan freaking tastic and it weighs nothing. Inside that I got the nectar what is this burnt what is this? Guava. Nectar guava with that TFN tobacco free nicotine. And I'm also vaping on a Reverie that I can't quite show you guys yet on the X Mini from Desire Designs. Last but certainly not least, I've got the Recurve on from Watofo and Mike Vapes with the Homeboy Rage Box. And inside that, I am rocking that Rounds Blue Mango. Um, dude, juice capacity for days, y'all. Anyway, what about you, Demo? What's up, guys? All right, so I am rocking the QP Kali right here up top of the Rage by Omboy OC and Desire Designs. Same kind of thing. Inside of that, I have the legit straw melon cupcake. And uh, it's, I'm still, jury's still out about this particular flavor, but the other two within the legit line are, as the name sounds, legit. Um, <clears throat> I'm really enjoying that. In addition to that, I've got my giant Fatality RTA on top of the uh, the Boss 3000 XL thing, massive DNA 250 with the Daily Vape TV sticker on it. And uh, yeah, so I'm rocking that. And inside of that, I've got some of the Squid Industry shots, the 357. This is a strawberry rum punch. With the titanium redemption with the silver plated deck up top and that is rocking the same juice straw melon cupcake um last but not least kilo 1k lemon berry pod and that's what i got with me today how about you mm, wait is it am i the last wait no nick, nick jesus you guys you always forget about me <laughs> <laughs> nick, <sighs> nick you're up Fine, fine. I guess I'll go. I guess it's my turn. All right. I'll make it quick. Defiant Designs TS full purple setup. If I like hold it close enough to the camera, I just disappear uh, with a recoil rebel on top. And in there, I've got some, I think this one is uh, Menthol Molotov by Riot Squad. Uh, I've got the V mod, not Matt's wife, uh, the V mod <laughs> with the Lucid RDA. Um, and I've got the awesome dragon coils that I built today for Fresh Build Friday Live to attempt number three <laughs> with some Blast Mango in there of my own creation. I've got the Rage um, by Omboy OC. There it is with the Templar RDA on top with some more of my Blaz Strawberry. Blazberry, good stuff. Available now on uh, lucidrda.com. Coupon code DailyVapeTV for 15% off Blazzy Liquid. There you yes, go. There's sir. your shameless plug. I've got my Dull Dime mod number 20 with the uh, Velocity, authentic Velocity V2 RDA on top of there with a custom cap by my friend, The Vaping Machinist on Instagram. Make sure you check him out. He's awesome. And a DHD old school uh, 810 or, or Kennedy tip up top there with, I think I'm putting some uh, Tropical Fury by Riot Squad in there. And I've got a couple other setups, but it's really nothing that special that I care to even mention. But I'm rocking the jewel for the pod system, the, the Turk jewel, well, Turk jewel tonight. Um, and I've got my apple cider. And if anyone can name this style glassware, you get five cool points in the book of Daily Vape TV. So there you go. I lied. I, I don't have a dreamer. I had the phobia on top of my Dole Dime mods. 
And uh, I, I have a special <laughs> request from all of us here. Uh, I think we should all hold up our dull dime mods to the camera for a few seconds so Michelle Lynn can, can get. Uh, yeah, you can vape it if you want. Just just make sure yeah, you can see it. Stand. You got to so, put batteries in it, Stan. I'm trying to find my batteries. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle can get some screenshots in because she loves us so much. And she should just screenshot this because it's funny. And we love Michelle. Yes, we do. Of course we love Michelle. <laughs> Come on, get up to the screen. Come on, just I'm no. You don't it. have batteries in his. He can't use his. I got it right here. Look, I forgot. I forgot. Hold okay. Up, hold it up. All I'm saying is hold it up to the screen. Just it's a hold picture, on. not a video. Okay. There we go. Boop. Okay, cool. Done. There we go. <laughs> I still want to vape it out of respect for Michelle because I love this mod. You should have batteries in it already. Well, your while, Stan, while Stan is doing that, we're going to do our first round of Instagram shout outs. You shut if you want to get shouted Joel. out, tag us on Instagram um, in all your funny photos, watching the stream, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, first of all, we have Mrs. Clownet. We have, I believe that would be Mischief.74. It's a very uh, leet spelling of Mischief, but I think that's what it says there. <laughs> We have Shadow Link Vapor, Clown Vapes. We have, uh, let's see. Well, Matt, Matt actually reposted. So there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Poon Sauce underscore McNasty. We have Demo. There you go. <laughs> frames 116 actually that's a that's a shout out from me to him uh he, he posted the uh the care package i sent him today we have vapor underscore swaggins we have ao underscore vape we have matthew carruthers underscore duvo we have mm, is this a stew post not technically no he just tagged me okay random we have uh Man, everyone's tagging me, but it's not stew related. Um, looks like I know. Oh, no, there's Sammy, uh, Sammy Nitro 5150. We have, uh, let's see. All right. Why don't you just hold off on those for a little while? We'll do them a little <laughs> bit later. Um, no, I think you get anyone it. watching the show, like just in their underwear? Or... <laughs> no, I want to see. No, I don't. No, Sammy no. Nitro was polishing his mod last week. That was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, inside the chat, we've got Builder Guard. We've got Michelle Lynn. We've got Just Vapor Addict vaping with Mr. Just Right. Yeah. Um, Huckster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Empire Vape Co's in the house. Chuck Allen. Legion Vapes. Brad Leavitt. Mitch. Frank Wolf. Zach P. Shout outs. Shout outs. Grumpy Old Vapor says, Strange. I can hear Stan on my phone, but not on my TV. That is strange. Am I that in both ears now? I hope I'm in both ears now. I did some messing around. Um, Joe Trisha, I see a lot of stooges. James Nunya, because it's Nunya business. David Pearson, vaping minor. All right, guys, if you didn't get a shout out, I feel bad. I'm sorry. But uh, thank you very much for being here tonight. We appreciate it. And you guys rock. So, how do you guys want to start out tonight? We want to. Matt, is there a. Um, You've been uh, you've been doing this for a long time. This review thing, man. Uh, how long have you been doing it for? Um, since February of 2014. Feels like it's been twice as long. Vape years are like dog years or something. But yeah, so a little <laughs> over four years. How long did it take you before you actually started like doing YouTube only? Um, like full time. You're saying? Yeah. Uh, well, it, I kind of, it was like out of necessity because I got laid, I worked at a newspaper and I got laid off. Um, I think it was towards the end of the summer in 2014 and I was already working on a juice line. So, you know, I wouldn't say I was just working on YouTube full time. I, I the juice line stuff going, but it was fairly quickly after, you know, like six months after the channel started. Okay. Dang, that's pretty quick. That's, that's awesome. I wish I was like that. Yeah, I mean, I was just kind of like forced into it, you know, like they, they laid off like half of the sales team at the newspaper. And it's just like, well, I got this vape thing going on. Might as well uh, focus on that. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Uh, well, you guys, you guys are quiet. I mean, this is just an interview with me and Matt. You know, we're just going to hang out. And... Look, man, I, I, already 
I'm just going stand to stand by today for Twisted. I got to see him on. I'm Twisted just so Live. used to everybody being like, "What? What? What? Wait! What? What?" All over each other, and and, and Nick doing this in the background. Yeah, I mean, why do you guys hate me so much? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, man. So, so chat. there's been stuff going on in the news. Um, hold on, what were we talking about before the show? I forgot. Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> Have you heard about the um, the nicotine thing with oh. the FDA, where they want to drop the nicotine levels in basically all tobacco products across the board? Yeah, I mean, I, I I heard about it quite a bit. It's quite a long time ago, and they were talking about cigarettes lowering the nicotine in cigarettes. Um, I haven't heard anything related to whether they're planning on regulating it for vapor. Products. I'm sorry, man. My take on the matter is it's too little, too late. You didn't killed all these thousands of people, gave all that these many of people cancer. Now you want to lower the nicotine levels? But the nicotine level doesn't have anything to do with that. You mean it don't? Uh, I mean, the you nicotine. Were, uh, the nicotine, nicotine is not what gives you cancer. That's what makes go back and smoke more of them nicotine is the addictive part of well it. yeah i mean it's I an anti-science argument because when it comes to addiction your body tends to titrate to what it's used to so you know whether it be only three milligram say say they banned all but three milligram e-liquid you're just going to vape as much as you you know more to get that same amount of nicotine that you were getting from 12 milligram e-liquid that's why a lot of people like when they say oh i'm lowering my nicotine so, you know, I'm because I'm trying to get up, you know, lower amounts. You're a lot of times you're not, unless you're counting your puffs or or whatever, you're you're not really lowering it. You tend to just your body tends to regulate itself when it comes to substances that it's that it's addicted to. Right. Think and about so it this way. Think people about it. Is it a money thing for them to lower the nicotine level in cigarettes to make people smoke more of them so they sell more of them so they take up some of the profits in which they lost this last year? I mean, that's from logistically that seems like it would make sense. If anything, it's going to increase the sale of cigarettes because people are just going to smoke more of them, and you're going to get more tar. You're going to get more of the thousands of chemicals that are in cigarettes, and people are going to die faster. So how is that making it any less desirable for people to, that smoke cigarettes? That's what I don't understand. But also think about it this way. In the UK and Europe, they have TPD regulations and their way around that is short fills. Now, they have 50 mils in a 60 mil uh, uh, container, and they put a shot of nicotine in it, which is nicotine and, and VG most of the time. And that one shot of nicotine in a 10 mil bottle will raise it up to a three milligram level. So in, speaking I believe, 18 concentration. I suppose the argument when it comes to cigarettes, though, is maybe they think like people that are new smokers won't get addicted as easily so a kid goes 16 year old kid gets a pack of smokes maybe uh because it's got such low nicotine levels in them you know he won't get addicted as easily i don't know if maybe that's their thinking but a lot of it's pretty flawed it's still going to kill right. off the the current generation of smokers sure so demo you're, you're trying to say something yeah demo. go ahead demo I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, man. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. Has no, anybody okay. mentioned okay. the fact of I'll short remember. fills? When you have that little oh, yes, short fills. Fill nicotine, the, what are the dangers of somebody getting a hold of that? You know, we have all this thing about kids getting a hold of nicotine, and yet they have a short fill. That's a concentrate of nicotine in which if that's consumed as opposed to the other, how did you really save anything? How's the, what's the saving grace there? I've never understood the short fill method or reasoning behind it. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. The reasoning behind it is so that they can get one, so they only have to pay for the the regular, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they only have to pay for one 10 mil bottle, not 15 flavors, if that makes sense. So when they go right. get their um, their certification or whatever, I, I can't think of the word I'm, I'm looking for right now. But whenever they are actually qualifying it for TPD, they basically take this 10 mil of nicotine and they say, okay, this is nicotine. This is what's regulated. I need to pay for this so that it's available to go on the market. So they pay the TPD to do all the processing on this. And then they don't have to do all the processing on all the flavors that are zero milligrams because they don't have nicotine in them. Right. So they can so have 50 flavors that they don't have to pay for. They only have to pay for one. Right. So speaking of that, I live in Minnesota, right? And we have one of the highest nicotine taxes in the country at 95%. 
and the um in fact I, I, I believe that is the highest in the country and so there's an entire tax category for a lot of juice companies to sell to minnesota where they split the cost with either the retailer or there's various different ways that they can do it but one of the things that's starting to happen here in minnesota is everybody keeps telling me my mic is low how's is that any better I'm yeah you can't raise a little the, okay how about that is that better all right, cool. I just had to raise the gain a little bit. Um, anyway, the we, we're we're, we're going to start getting short fills here in Minnesota. Like they're going to start selling them because any zero milligram nicotine uh, juice is not taxed in that same way. So yeah, I mean, there's there's no reasoning for it by the government. It wasn't planned by like the UK government. It's just a loophole. So exactly. I mean, they could close it at any time. Right. But right now, that's why you see that so much in in the UK. They're actually planning on including short fills in TPD, so you will still have to go through the normal testing standards that uh, TPD liquids do, uh, except it's like making an exception kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. TPD is kind of screwy, screwy, screwy right now, even. Uh, but I believe that change goes into effect November. Don't quote me. Something like that. Um, I just I just thought something was funny. Uh, I got to poke fun at... at uh... Where do you go? Hold on. I got to poke fun at Nev117. He says, everyone's volume is low. <laughs> that means your volume needs to be turned up, bub. Just, or just, you have the master volume low. Well, I mean, what do you mean? Like, it's cranked all the way on YouTube and the master volume's low? Yeah. Oh, shit. What just happened? <laughs> uh, Welcome to the stew, everyone. Yeah. See, you guys made discussion. me start messing with stuff. Right it's just rife with technical oh. difficulties every single week. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm That's glad I'm not the fine. only one fine. Stan, today. I'm hey, the only one who though, never have any issues with my streams. <laughs> your live streams. They, your live streams are so fantastically like Bad. just just it was so awesome to watch. It's like watching like a, a train crash in slow motion. Wreck. Oh, so awesome. I loved it. Oh, because I the whole time he's like, guys. yeah, I yeah. Bring it up, guys, and we're going to move forward. Uh, be sure everybody to go fund the suit. We're bringing up yes. that again. Uh, we're going to hear that many times tonight, guys. I want to personally give okay. a big shout out to the live stream that went on last night uh, where they matched the contributions to the fund the suit. That is something that we have to tip our hats to. And we have to respect that because that did not have to be done. They, they could have just said, you know what? Donate to it, donate to it, donate to it. But they went a step above and beyond and they matched the contributions to that. That's phenomenal, guys. Thank you, guys. Mike Vapes, uh, who, all, who all was on there last night? Mike Vapes. Uh, Brian. Bergen, it was Brian. Baby. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. Damn good guys over there, man. Uh, I got to, again, personally, I'm thanking you. For what y'all done i don't care if the rest of the panel thanks you but i thank you i actually oh, lent them all the money to match it <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you i thought you might be behind that, that buddy you know, you know like from all... your bitcoin adventures right <laughs> the other yeah. m is that it's actually suck my money so suck my money. Suck my all right money, so i gotta nice. play something for you guys this is from nick's build stream earlier and this is during one of the spots that he had just the epic the most epic crash and burn here oh wait hold on my volume's off here we go here we go that was that was epic is what that was that was can a producer like take that and download it and just loop it and like make a beat out of it just add a kick drum in the back and make something funky absolutely absolutely let's do it Okay, I, I turned up. A win. I turned up all the volumes across the board. We are peeking into yellow territory, and I mean, if I get any louder than this, which sometimes I do, I'll get Jeez. into the red. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, yes, fund the suit. Miss Clownette is on top of it, dropping the GoFundMe in the um in the chat. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. Everybody asks me, why don't you have Super Chat on? Why don't you have Super Chat on? My channel is not monetized. However, if you are one of those people that's always like, I want to donate to Super Chat. I want to donate to Super Chat. Take that buck, two bucks, buck 50, whatever, $20, I guess. Um, drop it into the GoFundMe. That would be so fantastic. That would be fantastic. We would love that. Um, 
it would be really great. Also, Vape Radio is doing a promotion where if you donate five bucks to the GoFundMe, they'll play whatever song you want. So if you want to just load up all day long with Britney Spears, go drop a bunch of money and GoFundMe and then say, hey, look at this. And that would be awesome. We could just jam out Britney Spears all day long. And um, Matt would really appreciate that. You Love you, um, Britney. Yeah, dude, Britney. So, <laughs> Takes me back to the old days. <laughs> it's Britney, bitch. Ah, don't do that. Don't what? Do that. You can't say yeah. bitch? Oh, baby, baby. Oh, you have my do, God. You have, to do it with the, you have to do it with the voice. <laughs> so, um. It's Britney, bitch. uh so that was so we talked about the gofundme we talked about and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on we're gonna Um, talk about it a lot tonight yeah that's what i know i'm just letting you know right now captain it's going down we're gonna talk about it a lot tonight all right thanks thanks (laughs) killer dang what is it you need to smile a little bit joel Joel, you need to smile because man no i do smile a lot guys i'm a happy guy man but we have been in this fight man i mean we're like round 10 right now of a 12 round bout you know we have got to step it up on our comments we have got to step it up on our funding we have i mean it just it has to happen naked 100 went above and beyond donated what was it how much did they end up donating thousand dollars i think yeah. every manufacturer every american juice company don't spend your money with companies who ain't right now if you go through that list and you don't see your favorite juice company on there i say don't spend no more money with them you know let them know if you don't care about the community the community is no longer going to support you. If the people working on the lawsuit don't get funded, then they can't afford to work on a lawsuit. I mean, right. that's just how it is. And we will lose. They'll have to go get another job. Lobster is not families. cheap, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and there so, is an effort right now to try to get the Chinese manufacturers to start giving more to Like we, we talked about before the stream started, but on the last round of funding, they – the Sevia, the the organization, it's kind of like an advocacy organization for the Chinese manufacturers. They donated a hundred grand to the to uh, to it last time around. So everyone's kind of pushing them to do you know basically do another round of funding. So hopefully we see that soon too. I have made it a personal agenda. Any conversations I'm with with Chinese manufacturers, I tell them, look, you owe it to the community to cut that check. Even if you've done it before, do it again, guys. You we you have to do that if you want to be. I'm not saying you're buying customers of sorts, but you're just showing the community that you support them. You know, when I started my YouTube channel, I have always been about supporting the companies which care about the community. If right. they don't care about the community, I give two flips for them. I ain't got nothing to do for them. One of my favorite companies has a piss poor customer relations department. So therefore, I'm no longer, I have nothing to say for them, you know? And well, I hope they get the check because their stuff is not cheap. I don't necessarily think that you should be supporting the cause to show your customers that you care. I think you should be supporting the cause so that you actually have things to sell in a vape shop in the future. Like, I mean, if you're not, I, gonna... mean, that, that's a... I agree, but that's just not how those Chinese manufacturers think. Yeah. Most of them aren't even vapors. Well, I, I mean, was, I was thinking, let's just yeah. be honest. It's just capitalism. Like, I agree. They, they, they do it to obviously like, you know, for faith to save face, and also obviously they don't want to, they don't want bans and bad stuff happening in the states. But oh yeah, it's not for the same reason that some of us might you know don't. But we got to start attacking these juice come. Not I'm not going to rephrase it. Don't attack. No, but you need to start. You need to start pushing these American juice companies to really start cutting them damn checks. You know because. It, it just boils my blood to see that they just want to get all the profits they can get, all the profits they can get, and not support this cause. What happens when this goes away? They're just going to take all your money that you've spent with them and retire on and say, oh, well, I made my money. I'm good. You know, don't need to worry about those guys anymore. No. You know, let's support the companies in which cut those checks. Do, you, do everybody a favor. Go through your Instagram and tag them companies and say, hey, fund the suit. Leave that hashtag on their page. Just uh, one comment. They post up a little hand check of their juice bottle, whatever it is, underneath that. Leave a comment. Hashtag from the suit. You know. Yeah, I know. If I was one of these juice companies that was under like major scrutiny right now, like for example, Dripmore Candy King. Obviously, yeah. they're rebranding because they have to. But I would also be donating a shitload of money to the suit to try to uh, at Save least help, 
help my public image a little bit. And, Absolutely. you know, obviously they should care. They're, tr they're moving like a hundred, 200,000 bottles a, a month. So but, yeah, but are they going to do that? No. Huh? <laughs> are they going to do that? Nope. <laughs> if their marketing no. I mean, department... I've heard before that they've gone to some organizations and they've actually been turned down because of, you know, their branding and stuff, but there's nothing keeping them from, from donating to that GoFundMe. Absolutely. If anybody is and like, if they have a, a marketing person that's not screaming, like we need to do this, then they need a different marketing person. Right. And I I'm, had a good talk with our sponsor, Silverback. Sorry, Demo. And they... When I spoke with Mikey the other day, kind of asking him the state of where we're at, what we're doing, coupon codes and so forth, he said, man, right now, brother, he said, we'll honor the coupon codes, no problem, but we really want people to start going towards that. You know, tell them to email a screenshot of their donation or something. We'll make it worth their while when they place their order. You know, he didn't go to specifics, but he said he'd make it worth their while. And he's, the, our whole conversation was based around that, and they were really driving that fact home. And I've always had mad love and respect for Silverback. But that really, really just solidified that, that they actually give a flip. You know, that was like their whole, they're moving and everything. And he's sitting there telling me, look, right now, our focus on fund the suit, fund the suit, fund the suit. He said, email him a screenshot of your donation or whatever, and he will make it worth your while. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, as far as, you know, that, so many of you might remember, um, you know, during the, uh, the, flavor survey i told everybody that if i were to if if we got if we hit our mark thirty thousand, that i'd be donating one thousand dollars to advocacy and this is where that's going so as soon as i as soon as my check clears that i deposited today i will be uh shooting that over right away and uh you know so that's my you know i believe i believe in this 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 is this is one of the biggest advocacy things that we can do right now so anything you can spare you know I and like people are saying, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, please. By all means, like go people ahead. are saying in the chat, you know, like the industry should be the ones funding it. I totally agree with that. Like they should be the, the primary, the, how am I tr trying to word this? They should be first and foremost in that. But at the same time, I'm not going to tell people not to donate if they want to, you know, and, but I don't think we should shame people into it either. But um, shop owners, shop but, owners, you donate left and right too. shop owners, yeah. manufacturers, the distributors, distribution companies, these distro companies that do massive, crazy giveaway things and whatnot to drive people to buy from them so their shops will order from them. Those distro companies need to be cutting those checks too. The mom and pop shops, they need to cut the checks too. Yeah. It's up to everybody. It's not, or just these people, or just these people, or just these people that we've always seen in the vape industry. We need to do this collectively. We all need to go arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, stand up and support something in which we love and which has employed many a people, saved many a lives. Show you give a flip, man. Five bucks is five damn. I know some people say, well, I can't five dollars. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Man, that's cheaper than a bottle of juice. Man. That's cheaper than a set of coils. I mean, it's five bucks. On that note, Yeah, Joel, and it's good for people to always remember, like, government stuff takes time. A lot of people got com complacent, you know. They're like, well, I donated a lot of money in 2016. Nothing really changed. And my business is doing fine right now. Nothing's going to happen. And so they're, they're just kind of like, I'm not going to keep giving money to advocacy. They don't, they don't realize that a lot of these things, especially lawsuits or um, legislation or whatever, it, it just takes time for, I mean, this, this court case could very well end up in the Supreme Court and it, it could take years. Yeah. And also on, on your topic, Joel, I feel like it should almost be like a sliding scale. Like, all right, if, if you don't make a lot of money, then give two bucks, you know? If you make a little bit more and you normally go out and buy a coffee every day, skip one coffee, like, like Vapor Swaggin says all the time, skip a coffee and give five bucks. You know, if you make a little bit more money, do 10, 20, et cetera. And shop owners should do 500, a thousand dollars. You know, it's basically, you know, give a day's take to advocacy to help fund the industry that's lining your pockets. Well, my Patreon, I haven't said it yet, I'll say it right now. I'm, my Patreon, I'm going to donate. Whatever's on my Patreon is going there, and I'm going to double my Patreon. Whatever my Patreon is for the month, I'm going to match it, and I'm going to send it over there. I got one better well, for I, you guys. I already donated already, but I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again. Why? Because there's a couple paydays before the time that 250K, I think we got a couple paydays down. I think I can afford to write off a couple checks, maybe not buy a new mod, maybe not buy a new atomizer. Hell, when somebody can drop 140 on an atomizer, 
you can drop 140 bucks to save this industry. Yeah. You know, that atomizer will be on sale in six months. Don't go buy that atomizer. Go fund that suit. Let's I got I, I got it. Oh, sorry, Joe. I got, I got one. I'm sorry uh, it's going to be if you do it again. Well, you'll like what I'm about to say, though. I got one. I, I got one more for you guys. If you guys email me from Vape Stew, if you guys email me your confirmation, I will match up to 500 extra dollars on top of the 1,000 that I'm already donating. All right. So if you email me your confirmation to demovapes at gmail.com, demovapes at gmail.com, I'll pop it down in the, in the chat there. Email it to me. I'll tally it up, and uh, you know we'll uh, we'll get we'll get five hundred extra bucks. You know, up to, well up to five hundred extra bucks. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't have the money like Demo, but well, <laughs> I as soon as my wallet shows up, I texted my wife. Maybe she'll bring my wallet. Hopefully, that'll be awesome. I've got it pulled up. I'm gonna put two fifty on it. Um, the that's two hundred fifty, not two dollars and fifty cents. And I'm not, but, and I'm not trying to show off here or anything like that. But I'm a currency trader. Well, I can no, it's, it. I'm, it's, I'm, it's, it's. I'm happy it's to. It's not a matter of showing off. My donation no, went under as anonymous because I don't yeah. care. For the, I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it because it's something I'm passionate about. Something well, I enjoy. You know, I don't want. I don't want man. I, I got a little man. Bragging. I want to see him grow people, up. Like you kind of want to set an example, and I think that us donating is a very good example to set. Uh, as far as I just wanted to tell you guys that I just looked at the fund the suit and I am very, very proud to say that in eight days they've already reached half their goal. That's phenomenal. That's I did see uh, NorCal Sick Boy on Instagram. He did post that. I've seen that prior to the show coming up. Um, man, I respect the hell out of that. Let's not forget our comments, though. Let's get those in, too. We, I mean, it's Absolutely. a multi front assault. You know, it's we, also worth mentioning that uh, the. Uh, that 250k isn't like all they need. So people are like, no. "Well, where are the plaintiffs at?" I'm sure that Nico Pierre probably has 100k in on this on this round of funding and stuff like that. I mean, the 250 is just what they're trying to get from crowdfunding. It's not like yeah. that's all that's that's needed. Oh, it's going to take millions. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And to again, I watched you earlier, Matt. I watched the entire show you on earlier, and I want to say something that has been preached for a long time. You know, he's Richard said a long time ago. It takes money. You get it takes money. You got to do the money. You, the money has to be there. You know, like it takes money to fight money. You know, it's like who's got the bigger bank? And it's a multi-front assault. It's not just with the financial part. The comment is free. You know, and we our comments are not up there. You know, if I wish that GoFundMe was tied into where you could leave a comment and that comment was registered over there as well. That'd be pretty damn smart because all the people donating the money to get their publicity, so to speak. Oh, yeah, my company donated. Well, did you your company comment too? Did all your board members and all your employees take the time to sit down and comment? You know, when you got a sales team of 10 people, that's 10 comments. Say, hey, guys, Monday morning meeting. Here we go. Everybody pick up your phones and which this company pays for and leave a comment right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So well, what do y'all think about the uh, aerial statement? Oh, uh, aerial it, statement. That was where I was going next, man. Well, I um, already beat you to it, sir. So you, you were just, just rolling, you were just rolling, rolling this along tonight, Joel, man. You, you, yes, were, on a, you were on I think a Joel, is, Joel is like the transition man tonight. Absolutely. Yes, he is because Demo's dropping the ball. What's happening, Demo? He can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> yeah, man. I keep, I keep, I keep going. <laughs> well, get some. Oh, what do you got to say, Demo? Get some. I, I have nothing to say. Yeah, um, oh, as far as, no, as far as the the Armageddon thing. Well, so I I read that right. I read the statement and I kind of came away from it thinking, well, you know, I mean, this is a statement that he made. I don't know. It it didn't to me at first when I read it, I was just like, well, okay. I mean, you know, he's renewing his a commitment to be. Um, to be, I guess, committed to the United States, the, the holding up the policies and making sure everything is correct on his end. But I mean, you know, you, that still doesn't answer the question that we're all wondering as you to, to you know, whether, quick? yep, uh, do, you, do you have it up? I have it I'll up. I can read it. I got it. I got it. No, you sit back and just enjoy it, Captain. You, you've been talking too much. Button. You've been talking too much. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> Muted. Stand with the mute hammer. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
you guys, we all we all know about what's been happening. We talked about it last week a little bit. Um, the Armageddon thing, basically, his company was cloned, and now there's the whole question of whether or not the products have been ma- manufactured in China the whole time. Um, he guarantees that the mods are made 100% in America, but there's been no real questions answered. So, essentially, um, according to, or, well, to answer all of the accusations and things and to... I guess in their mind, put it rest, put to rest the people that have been questioning the videos and stuff they've been putting out to answer these things. Um, they issued a message to the public and customers. Customers is spelled wrong, unfortunately, <laughs> of uh, Armageddon Manufacturing. It says May twenty fifth, two thousand eighteen. I, as the founder and CEO of Armageddon Manufacturing, announced that I have formally adopted and am now implementing a business policy for Armageddon. That emphasizes a commitment to total compliance with the laws that apply to U.S. origin claims for our many products, such as made in America, made in the USA, or qualified claims, if applicable, such as made in the United States with imported parts, period. (laughs) To accomplish this, Armageddon has retained a national law firm to advise us of the applicable law which includes customs regulations and extensive Federal Trade Commission, FTC, enforcement policy statement on such claims, and how to apply the laws and principles of the FTC to each of our products. We remain committed to selling high-quality products to the vaping community, committed and are equally committed. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, there's a little typo there. We remain committed to selling high-quality products to the vaping community, committed and are equally (laughs) committed to selling those products in a way that is transparent and that does not mislead or deceive any of our valued customer consumers. So I'm curious to hear what Matt has to say on what he thinks about that um, announcement, um, where he thinks they're actually, what they're trying to accomplish there. And uh, if it puts his mind at ease at all. Um. No, I mean that that's just that was basically copy paste from his lawyer. I mean, let's be honest here. It doesn't address the uh sorry, are you guys still there? It froze for oh, a yeah. sec. Yeah, 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 we're here. Yeah, we're all good. It, it it doesn't really address anything in the past. I mean, let's I, I'm not saying that, that he's I don't have enough proof or anything to say that what he did do or what he didn't do. But I mean, it's just damage control at this point. He's still not addressing like the the accusations, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, I, I mean, I've always been of not always, but the more I've looked into it, I've always been of the opinion that the mods are made in the U.S. and the RDAs are not. You, it, if you compare the pricing to other companies, if you compare him dropping the price by like 30, 40 percent um, at one point, I just I don't see how the the, the finances don't stack up. For me no you'd have to be making them so cheaply in the in the united states that they couldn't even be at the quality level that they are at as it is even um, you know for me it was it was one of those things that i'm you know the similar mindset when this whole thing happened you know last week we talked about it and this this when this whole thing happened i was sort of like ah, you know there's like no real evidence on either side right like the video that we referenced last week that they kind of exposed this didn't really prove anything nor did the video that that uh you know ariel released on uh, ronnie cash's channel also didn't prove anything right and so now he's released this statement that yet again proves nothing right and yeah. so we're sort of in this like loop of you know never ending i don't know you know well, not, i, I said it last already. week and i still stand by it ariel armageddon manufacturing what I believe it has to be done to save this situation. Fire up one of your machines. Show us you have the ability and capabilities of producing something in which you said you produced and made. Show it. It's already been made. There's no NDA required for something that's already on the market. Proof is in the pudding. You know what I mean? If you talk the talk, eventually you have to walk the walk. This is the game of poker. Everybody has to show cards at some point in time. Do you want to show your cards and show you were bluffing, or do you want to lay down four aces and let them know you was holding I mean, if you look at like the, the the purge mods video where the guy goes through his manufacturing uh, plant and stuff, I mean, you see that it takes a pretty big operation to make a decent amount of mods and uh, and Addies. And I mean, I would say Armageddon sold more than Purge probably has. And so 
you know, showing two machines with, with nothing else going on. I mean, I, not you even know, those machines could just be there when they're making prototypes, you know. Yeah. And I, I, we touched on that too. You know, there's other manufacturers that have walked you through their production facilities and shown you what they're capable of doing and what's coming off the assembly lines after they've made it. Um, I, have I a felt the same way when I seen two machines sitting there idle, not doing anything at all. You know, like that, 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 you're not, man, don't play us for stupid. You know what I mean? If you play me for stupid, you're going to piss me off. You know, because I'm going to let you know real quick, I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. You know, and when you play your customers for dumb, you think they're going to respect that? No, they're going to say, piss on that. You know, people want to be treated with the same respect you wish to be treated with. If you're saying, well, they're not respecting me by calling me out, doing this, doing that, man up, walk that walk. You talk to talk, get to walking. Here's and my question. Is. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. I was just going to say, <clears throat> Louis uh, Nicola in chat says Steve Kennedy shows his RDAs being made all the time. And that's because Steve Kennedy is American AF. And <laughs> yes, he, <is. laughs> he doesn't care about NDAs. He is like basically, you know, it's him and his kid making the, the stuff that you use. And I, I truly 100% believe that his products are made right here in the U.S. Because you can, you can pretty much tell. You know, you can feel, it. The, you can the, feel the, the quality of the metal, the way you can fits your wallet together. when you get through buying one. It's yeah. a whole <laughs> yeah, yeah, but all right, all right. You, but, you pay for though. But he's got a huge sale going on right now for Memorial Day. So there you go. I mean, wait till it's on sale. I bought my Ruby 270 when it was on sale. You know, I, I paid a good chunk less for it than than full retail. Mm. Um, but there's no way Kennedy would ever be able to afford dropping his price from ninety nine dollars down to fifty bucks for good just because there's clones out that are that are competing with his product. But he, right. he doesn't care about clones at all. No, I know. And, I'm just saying even if he wanted to, he couldn't afford to do it. It costs But he doesn't care. Reason. He doesn't care if he sells stuff or he doesn't sell stuff. That's the the whole thing with Steve is like he just doesn't care. Like he's if they're gonna sell if they're gonna sell. If he comes out with a good enough product, people will buy it. Yeah, people will buy the clones, but he doesn't care about the clones. Just like the guys from Avid Vapor you know, they, the clone came out instantly after the, the V2 dropped, but they're just like, yeah, eh, that's a pretty decent clone. Eh. So here's <laughs> you know? the question. Here's the question, okay? We talked about this last week, but I didn't ask this question, and I'd like to kind of like to hear an answer to it, um, just an opinion or whatever. Are you sure? <clears throat> yeah. What? Okay, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm going to ask the question, and then I'm going to give a hypothetical and kind of just kind of put, put something in your head. So I was talking to Nick about this last night, okay? What would it take, other than an apology, what would it take for him to redeem himself or for the company to redeem themselves in the eyes of the masses? Now, we would, hold on, I'm not done, <laughs> two parts. What if, if, okay, say, now this is just a completely hypothetical and just like, it could be anybody, I'm just gonna use myself as an example, if I, because I met the guy, I met Ariel, he's a nice guy, seemed really genuine, um, talked a lot, you know, I mean, he told me he had a dreamer, like Big Lou Cinema Dreamer, and he loved it, and yada yada, I mean, it was great. I had a real good time with uh, Ariel. However, if I went to Ariel and I said, Ariel, let's do a mod together, here's the condition. I have this fantastic idea, let's do this idea, here's the condition, you let me record everything through the prototype stages you let me record everything for the first run and just put it out there for the world to see do you think that that would fix things not now not, show not me it doesn't have to be me i'm just saying if that happened show me that you can make what you've already been selling show me that your machines are capable of doing that if you've already got the program you've already got the program for it there's nothing for you to go load it in that machine and make that happen we did kind of hint on this last week as to what it would take for him to you know redeem himself and it's funny well, yeah, one but... of the things is named the redemption <laughs> i do all think it's i, I do also think show it's kind of interesting you claim, what you claim you can make prove it don't talk about it be about it I do also think that it's very interesting that just when all this is happening, the Immortal Mods comes out with the Vital RDA, right? The the Chinese-made um, Armageddon product, right? I think that it's really interesting that that's happening, and it looks basically just like an apocalypse with that's made in China, right? And so, I, you know, like like 
I don't know. That's just that that kind of that kind of wigs me out a little bit. You know, just like it's the timing of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think there's much of anything that he can do to necessarily like redeem himself right now, unless he could um, prove without a doubt that everything was made in the states that they've claimed was made in the states, which it's pretty clear he can't at this point because he or because he hasn't. <laughs> I, but I mean, time definitely heals this this industry does seem to have kind of a, a short memory and uh, there's been you mm-hmm. know companies in the past that have been in the doghouse and then a year later Populates. people forget about it but i don't know i mean it's it's definitely gonna gonna hit him in the short term right it just sucks because now that means armageddon has gone on the same list as you know my my list of companies that i don't you know dot mod five two eight it's in that same category for me anyway you know of this situation of companies that i don't really support now so and it's a bummer because I've, I've i've actually spent quite a bit of money with armageddon over the over the last couple of years but you know it's uh it is what it is stan and i sure did in, in no, uh, how do we get so many wrenches dude that's like every comment is a wrench <laughs> it, it, if, if, you, if you close chat and reopen it it fixes it it was a it was a little bug okay ah uh, wow sorry guys i'm gonna do that because i'm busy yeah, well, I'm like, like, damn, everybody's wrenched. Somebody yeah. went through and wrenched the whole dang chat. Right. Uh, Spencer made a, a good point right here. Uh, remember the Vupu drama? Someone reviewed it, just saying. Someone reviewed the, the Vupu drama? No, nah, well, I'm assuming he's talking about someone reviewed Vupu, like their new products, because oh. they've been emailing me left and right. Yeah, that's Man, it's okay. Happen, that was, it was there again. There wasn't enough there to really make a, make a sol- solid answer as to say who was in the right, who was in the wrong. You know what I mean? It's it's sad that this industry is plagued with bad business practices. You know, the Vupu drama was no never got clarified before the Armageddon issue came to be. You know what I mean? Until somebody says, you know what? Stop. Wait a minute. We need answers, and we need answers right now. Don't go. Well, let me talk to my manager and get a statement meant no right now on the spot clarify this you know let's make this happen so that people can know that yes i'm spending money with a good company who has good business practices and good morals all the way around we don't know who was in the right or who was in the wrong in that situation well it's two different situations too i mean it's pretty clear that voop is a shark but so is vandy vape and uh you know that that's just those companies are cutthroat and they hate each other I mean, and poor, and unfortunately, Tony got stuck in the middle of that and got, you know, uh, screwed around with. Well, with but, the, I mean, sorry. sorry, go ahead. I was just right. gonna say, with that whole situation, there was two sides of the story. I just actually learned something new just the other day about that. Speaking to an ex uh, Vupu rep that I used to deal with, and uh, yeah, and I, I think I've heard that heard that yeah, story as well. Yeah, I mean, sh- they're they're both not. Neither of those companies is innocent necessarily. Two sides, I mean, man. Right, and now, like I said, unfortunately, Tony just you know he got kind of stuck in it. Right, um, but I mean, as far as like this Armageddon thing, I mean, it's it's kind of a different situation. I mean, you portray yourself as like America, and uh, you know we're proud, you know, and happily made in America, and then you freak out about uh, you know cloners and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden this shit comes out. It definitely makes you start questioning things i mean i, mean, I it's feel a, really bad for the folks that did spend all the money with said company and now i really have to question themselves like damn did i really support that you know what i mean here we are for the red white and blue and it's an all red flag that doesn't just, make sense. right you know, <laughs> i feel like there's more going on sorry go ahead demo no it's okay i was just gonna say though is that someone you know is really short comment here but uh, already mixed up with says it's youtube you know about about the reviews, right? You know, someone reviewed it, right? So there's going to be someone on on YouTube that reviews these things. It's just the way it is. Now, speaking of that, speaking of YouTube, I'd really like to hear what Matt's thoughts are on the on the on the YouTube situation going on right now. Ah, stepping up that transition game, nice segue. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Spot. That's 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 my uh, that's my function. About time you picked it up, man. I've been taking me up your Absolutely. damn slack all night. Con- you conjunction <laughs> function. There you go. Um, I think, well, I might be a little long-winded with this, so that's go cool. for it, man. I'm going to go make me another Coca-Cola. For- <laughs> forgive me ahead of time. No, no, no. Um, I-, I think that, uh, well, I mean, it's kind of been a slippery slope. It, obviously, YouTube really started cracking down 
more after all that PewDiePie drama a year and a half ago or so, and people started getting demonetized and all that. And they, they promised their advertisers they would keep a closer watch on content. And then they started cracking down on, you know, gun channels, cannabis, probably the most recently, CBD recently. I just talked to a fairly popular news channel today who had a strike and uh, he didn't know why. And I said, dude, you have a CBD sponsor before your video. And uh, that's, that's most likely it. And so now, you know, obviously the fear is, is that the next step is going to be vaping. And there has been some strikes on vape channels who did CBD content. There's been strikes on some jewel content, but a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of the blogs and stuff wrote just horseshit and didn't actually, there was a few good ones, but there was a lot that was just BS. They didn't approach any reviewers to ask them. They said that the state was pushing YouTube to crack down on vaping. You know, the, the government was, which is totally false. Um, and there's still, and then there's other, and then you notice like there's other bloggers that are just copying the original blog that said that. And so there's a lot, a lot of BS out there. I mean, what I think happened with the Jewel stuff is I think that it got mass flagged by some, one of the anti-vaping groups because once everybody appealed it, they won their appeal. If it was, if it was YouTube's uh, uh, mission to strike down these videos and it was their idea, they wouldn't have let the, the YouTubers win their appeals. They wouldn't have given it to them. And so that makes sense. You know, I think that it's scary right now. And I think that there, you know, I got an email recently where they said, you know, cause I asked my YouTube rep about it where the, you know, it might not be smart for some of us to put links in our videos because at that point it's like considered set. It's not educational anymore. It's considered selling like it's a direct sale. Mm -hmm. And so, there's a lot of unanswered questions and it's scary, but uh, anytime something like this happens in our community, people always like add on to it, you know? Like it's the government doing this. The government's telling telling YouTube to crack down on us. So Matt, right now it's just kind of a wait and see thing. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to interject real quick. What are your thoughts? Cause I had one of my videos age restricted that I was talking about the goings on in Tennessee with their CBD, uh, the, the whole, big bust that they did. What was it? Operation Candy Crush, they called it. Uh, I was talking about that in one of my vlogs and that video got age restricted. Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, I think because you weren't necessarily promoting CBD, it wasn't a sponsor, you weren't linking to it. That's probably why you didn't get a strike, but it might have just you know, the, the algorithm may have just noticed that you were talking about it. Yeah, you guys are but, kind of freaking me out by saying that over and over again. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> the, uh, I don't, you're not going to get a strike for us talking about it. I know, but, I'm just messing with you. I mean, the more I've researched the CBD situation, the grayer it is. I, I always just assumed oh, it's just totally federally legal because it doesn't have THC in it. But um, there's actually been some court cases on it recently. The DEA has, has said that it can be scheduled, but it all depends on where they're getting it. So like if they're getting it from hemp, then it's probably it's okay. But if they're getting it from marijuana plants, it's not okay, even if it doesn't have THC. But then with hemp, like you still have to have like licenses and stuff to grow it or to import it, I think. And so the, the, the whole CBD thing's a lot grayer than I, I initially thought. And so I think that that's why YouTube decided to crack down on that because yeah. they're trying to make sure that they're not breaking federal uh, rules. Right. right. And I mean, it, it is it is an interesting thing. I mean, you know, we being that it's not from the cannabis plant, you know, that that, uh, you know, technically that's what's scheduled, I guess. But it, at the same time, in the in the culture that we are in now with the ban everything kind of culture, um, I have no doubt that that's what they're trying to seek that, you know, we'll ban it. Right. We'll ban it. It's it's, it, you know gets you high right and it's like and that's you know people people don't even you know people don't have any idea you know what it does actually funny story demo i was watching the the press uh re like press release kind of report yeah, you, on yeah on the uh, tennessee operation candy crush bust and they had the uh the sergeant or the the chief up there at the podium and someone in, in the media in the audience was saying, oh, well, do you know what CBD is? And he said, oh, well, it gets you high. All I know and is they, that it gets you high. 
they said, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's for pain. It's for inflammation. It's for this, that, the third. And he's like, well, why do people use it then? <laughs> uh, duh. You uh, know? <laughs> yeah. It's just thick skull pure, people, pure ignorance there. But what, what scared me the mo most recently, like I said, is that there's a cl there's a clause that they used against the cannabis and CBD channels where they're saying that um, you cannot, you know, any selling of harmful, dangerous, uh, illegal, or restricted products um, is a no-go, and selling can be links. And so I said, so would vaping hardware fall under that? And they said, yes. They haven't cracked down on anybody for putting links in vape videos yet. But if they were to come after us, that would be absolutely, I'm convinced, that would be the avenue they'd take to, to, to come after us. I've been going through and taking them out just in case. My own personal thing. Like, Chicken! <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta, honestly. Bro, look, is, I'm messing with you, I know, bro. I know I you are. You're vested in this 110%. I know you, you are, but. Messing with you're with. Man, I, I respect all your decisions 150%. Well, you know, what people but, don't understand is they, they're like, oh, well, why do you guys – see, I've had this question come up and I had to explain it. Why you guys just jump into Vimeo or why you guys uh, just doing whatever YouTube wants? And people don't understand that they're a private corporation. Like if we want to use – Censorship laws don't apply. Yeah, if we want to use this tool, we have to play by their rules. And if they make that their rule, then we have to do it. So, I mean, it stinks and we can raise a fuss about it and hopefully they'll change it. You know, we can we can kind of – we can kind of, you know, I don't want to say anything about turning stuff, but we, we can make a fuss about it and we can abide by the rules. That's what we can do. But the problem is YouTube should respect <laughs> the creators enough to clarify, make clarification. Like, this, this is what Absolutely. they did that with the gun channels recently, but they didn't do that with like the cannabis channels, CBD stuff. And so like, say this is kosher. This isn't, you know, you can do this. You can't do that, but they leave it all vague. Yeah. Oh, I hate how vague YouTube well, you know, is. What gets me is we live in an age where communication is so easy. I mean, communication abilities are phenomenal. Everybody has a fucking a freaking smartphone. Everybody has emails. I mean, it just takes just a message back and forth, and you can get it something done. The communication from YouTube to its content creators has to be better, you know, and vice versa. The the communication between the creators in YouTube has to be better. It needs to be clarification and communication. That would solve a big, big, hell, that might solve world hunger. You know, we don't know. But if, if more people practice better communication and better clarification, man, it would all be smooth for everybody. That is, and again, the same way we are going after this whole FDA deal and fund the suit, it's a multi-front attack with YouTube. Not attacking YouTube, but opening your ears and opening your emails and communicating with them and as, asking the questions that need to be asked. So they can give us the answers in which we need to ensure that nobody goes anywhere, that we can be here for every viewer, every subscriber. Congratulations, Matt, on your 200K. For those people, you know, that has, that, that has to be done. You know, just ask the right questions so you can get the right answers. Clarification from both sides. I don't think YouTube knows what they want to allow and what they don't want to allow. You know, yeah, they, they, they kind of fly by the seat of their pants. Matt, yeah. I had a question for you, actually. Uh, I got to ask this earlier. Ask Okay. <laughs> Dude, somebody's, uh, I, somebody's fired up tonight. He's, tonight. he's had too many Coca-Colas. Uh, so I got asked this earlier in my, my uh, Fresh Build Friday stream. Does YouTube play any sort of like favoritism for people that have X amount of subscribers? Like once you hit 100K, do you get like any sort of privileges or anything? Sure seems like it. Well, <laughs> um, you get a rep a youtube rep that you can have you know contact with and usually they get back to you within 24 hours uh, as far as like you know are they harder on smaller channels compared to larger ones i don't really think there's any proof to that i mean i think it's just a crapshoot what what they go after but i mean if you look at the cannabis channels they went after the the biggest and the smallest ones it seemed like there was no rhyme or reason to the strikes as far as the Jewel videos are concerned. And what was weird to me was the fact that one of the biggest YouTube reviewers for vaping products took down his Jewel video earlier that day and then put it back up after the fire died down. 
Um, I heard I mean, a little bit more about that. And basically his YouTube, his YouTube rep watched the video and said that it was fine. And so that's why he put, he made it public again. That's, that's what I heard. But I mean, at, during the time period where all of our videos were flagged and, and everything was in disarray, you search for Jewel, the word Jewel on YouTube, and you had his video and then all the, the kids getting away with jeweling in school and all that stuff. Stan, I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm saying these words and you're freaked out right now. No, it's okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm a conspiracy theory kind of guy when it comes to that kind of thing. But I got a tinfoil hat, bro. No, I mean, I don't think there's anything there other than he just put the video back up when his rep said, nah, it's fine. But I, like I said, I don't, it wasn't YouTube themselves that struck you guys. I'm almost certain, and this is my conspiracy theory, that a group like Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids searched reviewers and tried to strike legitimate jewel videos and didn't strike the kid jewel videos. The reason for that is, is you get down, you get the legitimate jewel videos down that talk about using it for quitting smoking and all that stuff. And then what's left is uh, kid videos and news videos talking about negative shit about the jewel. And so right. that being said, it just, you know, it coincided with campaign for tobacco free kids with, you know, basically going to war against jewel. So, I mean, I just would, and I, and I've talked to other advocates, advocates about this that know a lot more about this war than I do. And I mean, they, they think that that's the most plausible uh, thing to happen. Like I said, if it was YouTube themselves decision, they wouldn't have, have reinstated your videos. That being said, I'm curious. Um, you're you're an analytics watcher. Uh, I know this, right? Um, I've I've recognized this from some of your conversations in the chat. We've talked about we've talked in. So everybody everybody kind of that's really got high numbers kind of keeps an eye on the analytics. And we've talked about spikes and things. And I'm curious, have you noticed any kind of spike in maybe? thumbs downs or or reports or anything since all this stuff started on other kinds of videos like any kind not of on my thing? channel but i know there's other uh youtubers that have gotten you know like mass amounts of thumbs downs mm -hmm. um I as did. far sorry go ahead no i said i did i got uh, my equitas rda got a dislike dislike equitas rda video got a dislike bomb one and a half 1.1 1. 1, we watched dislikes. it happen on vape stew one yeah day. yeah that was crazy <laughs> it's, it's like a very thousand odd. all of a sudden so i was just curious if, if you had any run-ins with anything like that i think no, so. I've, ne I've never had strikes or anything like that knock on wood and I've, i haven't had like the dislike bot hit me but you i had mean your channel hacked at one point though yeah, I did get hacked one time. That was because the network I'm with got hacked. Oh, wow. <laughs> the the uh, um, wow. Um, but I mean, I have. I definitely think that vape channels get throttled a bit, and they get you know, you, you hear a lot of stories of people getting unsubscribed, or you hear a lot of stories of people you know even having hit the notification bell, but they don't get. But that, that happens to other channels besides vaping as well. There's just, there's a bunch of fuckery on YouTube. I had one of my subscribers tell me today that uh, an hour after my video ended, he actually got the notification that I was live. Yeah, the, yeah. the notifications have been very, I mean, yeah. even if you, even if you hit the notification bell, they still decide whether or not they're going to let notify you that that's on. And they're changing, not only are they changing that, um, they've also changed or they're experimenting with in your subscription thread, basically oh, showing yeah. all of your subscriptions. They're not putting them in chronological order anymore. They're putting them in order of what they think you want to see first. This not everybody's like mine's not like that on my app on my phone, but I've been hearing things about other people. That, they said that they're doing it with just a small amount. It's like right. a test right now. And they said they're going to give the option to make it chronological or have highlights but who knows if that's going to stay that way. Like how Facebook that was. Now. What's the point? Yeah, if it of turns even... into like Facebook shit where you, you can't do chronological anymore, that's, that's definitely going to suck. What's you the know, point of even giving us the option of being notified of our favorite uh, YouTubers if you're not going to tell us that they they put videos up or they're live or whatever? I just don't see the point. The point like, just take it down. If you well, just I mean, 
Oh, sometimes sorry. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right. I got a notification that, that vaping with Ken was live days after he was live. Like it was <laughs> like I got it like like the like last Aww. night when I was I started my live stream and uh, I got a notification that said vaping with Ken is live and I was like, oh no, he's live at the same time as me. And then someone was like, That was yesterday, bro. Like, you know, and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> poor Ken. Oh, a lot of that kind of shit. I don't think that it's just like, it's not necessarily vape related. It's just, you hear YouTubers all over the place talking about that stuff. I mean, I, I subscribe to a lot of, you know, non-controversial, you know, like camera channels. They'll say that that's happening to them. And it's yep. like, it's just, it's the site and they're constantly trying to make changes. And, you know, they have this uh, machine learning bot, they call it. And it's just, there's, there's not consistency yet. And it's, it's always a shit show. Hey, uh, Matt, oh, do you, oh, you, oh. you, <laughs> Matt, do you I see what Rob Jones said? Sorry, one sec, just to make everybody happy, then you can go. The, the Rob Jones said that in the, in the chat right there, just for a little fun. Can you pronounce that hashtag? Thweef? There you go. Very good. That's all we needed. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Just Right. So well, back well, on the well, jewel right. thing that we were talking about, you know, a lot of videos got strikes against them. And the reason I feel that happened is because of all the damn clickbait titles. You know what I mean? Like where to hide your jewel, how to hide your jewels. You know, people did a lot of clickbait titles just to get the views. Of, and you know what? YouTube probably said, all right, well, here you go. We're just going to ban them. Just hand out strikes left and right, you know, and yeah, but See, if that was the case, why would they have let people win their appeals? Why would everybody, everyone that... Because the people that actually cared to go back and appeal and actually went back and reviewed the video, they said, okay, yeah, this is a legitimate video. Let's go ahead and let this roll and, you know, grant them their appeal. Hence why it's called an appeal. I mean, it's just, if there's people out there that probably didn't give two flips about that, you know, they just wanted the views up real quick and be done with it. You know, I'm I, the whole clickbait thing is really, really... A fine line to walk because that algorithm machine that they have over there that's supposed to be a smart learning bot is picking up on what people are doing to crack that algorithm and once you crack that algorithm guess what they're going to change that algorithm again you know it's just the way that it's designed to work so yeah it's definitely funky i mean even if another thing i've noticed too is is like for example there's different groups on facebook that will ma vaping groups that will go mass flag videos that are made by minors that are made by kids so you know which is a good thing you we don't want you know 12 year olds reviewing a product but like they did that to a uh video where a kid was reviewing the smoke vape pen the 22 and that video got taken down but then like a day or two later tia got a strike on her smoke vape pen video so it's like i'm almost certain that the algorithm thought that it was just the smoke vape pen that was the problem, not the fact that it was a 12 year old reviewing it. And so then they kind of have that registered. So then they see another smoke vape pen video and think that that must be bad as well. Absolutely. So hence the where to hide your jewel, you know, well, that's a, uh, you gotta be a fool to put that as your damn title. I ain't putting that as a title for nothing. You know what I mean? I don't want to hide. I don't want to hide none of my vapes. I want to proudly vape. I want to show people, Hey, yes, I'm vaping this. I'm not hiding it. But when you insinuate that you have something to hide they're gonna wipe up you're done there you go well right. and we had that channel for a while that rhymes with ronnie lokes you know, <laughs> but, you know we'll, we'll go with that right <laughs> it's still uh, around uh no Not it's his channel's gone his channel's gone, channel's gone. I just, I just yeah, he started it. his own web page started his own website anyway whatever but that's but you know what that's the system working yeah. right because he brought it back we up. don't want those kind of stuff kind of stuff around but like that's the kind of person that gives our industry such a terrible reputation. Um, but what about the cigarette reviewers? Yeah, <laughs> is that a thing? That's that a, thing. a thing. Yeah, but that I mean, there's nothing in the terms of service that says an adult can't review any tobacco product. There's nothing in the community guidelines. So, do they post links? I I don't know. Probably not. I mean, they wait, do get I link? cannot believe that there are cigarette reviewers. That's so funny. I just, so, you know, it was, well, it's interesting because like, I, you know, I, you don't, when you're, when you were a smoker, did you ever walk up to somebody on the street who was also smoking and say, Hey, what'd you smoke in that? You know, like, no, like, you know, <laughs> just the subtleties of the tobacco well, from hey, Western everyone, Kentucky. Hey, what are you smoking on over there? You got a Newport? Can I get a Newport? Good. No <laughs> even bigger than cigarette reviewers are there's, there are some big cigar reviewers. I used there. to be a cigar smoker. The well, cigar I can see cigars over cigarettes, my, uh, but it's my jam back in the day. And, uh, 
you know, if you actually go back in time to one of his older videos, I actually, when I was like 19, sent him some cigars to review, <laughs> you know, back when I was smoking cigars. And that was, uh, that was my thing. But yeah. Well, let's, let's, we've, we've talked about all this. This is real good conversation. Uh, I kind of want to take it in a different direction now though, because I have a personal, yeah. we didn't talk about this outside of the, <laughs> the video, but I kind of have a question for Matt kind of want his opinion on it um and i know that you guys might be interested too i'm just curious about the state of the industry as well as far as hardware goes and <laughs> and um i know that matt you've been involved in a lot of projects um i know you probably were one of the first guys that was involved in projects as a reviewer right i mean you were one of the first guys putting out hardware um when this started to become a thing so i'm curious if you think that it's a good thing that so many reviewers or some some well-known, some not as well-known are actually getting chances to develop their own hardware with these bigger companies? Sure. I mean, I think it's a, it's a free market. And if they bring something to the table that people like, it's going to do well. And if not, it's not going to do well. I mean, I've had some products do well and some that have bombed. And that's, you know, I mean... As far as it is it a good thing, I think that reviewers are the ones that touch so many different products more than anyone else, more than even a lot of the vape shops. Um, so we see so many things coming across our desk. And when you when that happens, it's just kind of it makes you start thinking about ideas. Well, this would be cool, but what if it was in an RDA and what if it was a uh, you know a dual coil and so you know what I'm saying? You, it, it's just kind of a natural progression there. And so, you know, I mean, I, I I think that overall it has helped the the industry as far as getting good products. I mean, you guys are all probably using some things that were made by reviewers. Right. Um, yeah. well, you should ask. I got three nudges, four nudges in front of me. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll PayPal you after the show. Uh, I mean, as far as like other mail. hardware though, like tri Twisted and I talked about this th this morning, and for as long as I've been vaping people have always kind of been like, oh, it's oversaturated or, oh, it's stagnant. But it, it, it's, people have always said that. They, they kind of have a short-term memory. Like, you know, a couple, a couple years ago, RDTAs were huge and everyone and their freaking mother made an RDTA. And everyone's like, God, oh, we're so, you know, we're so uh, stale. And then, you know, the, but the market kind of dictates it. So let's move on to squonking. And now I hear that a lot of the manufacturers are having a harder time selling as many squonkers. So that tells me that the market's getting saturated. And then, you know, it's just like anything there, there's, there's these different phases and trends. And usually one person breaks that, that wall down and has a new trend and it's awesome. And then everyone follows suit and puts their own twist on it. And so I don't really see much difference from how it's been for as long as i have been vaping i mean the only difference really is like you didn't see as many cheap rebuildables when i started vaping it was like it was clones and uh some of the, some of the chinese um uh original designs were pretty crappy and i think a lot of the, what the chinese companies they, they didn't really understand what people wanted back then they got not just reviewers but they got people in the states to help them design products and so you know a lot of these products that are designed for a company they might not have anyone else's name on it but there's a good chance that they were you know they have a designer that's in the states i mean that's that happens a lot even a couple <laughs> of years ago stuff was when like when i started vaping a little over two years ago um it was still rebuildables and things like decent ones were expensive oh yeah um, yeah my very it's first rebuildable was a uh was a uh shoot what was it it was a geek vape avocado 24 oh, that was my very first rebuildable hated that and thing. no one told me that an rdta was a really bad idea to start with because i just never could get that wicking right <laughs> i was building four millimeter coils because i was like what more is probably better right you know <laughs> try building on a genesis atomizer i have one <laughs> well, a lot of these ideas are just building off of old ideas and may, trying to you know streamline them and make them better obviously rdtas came from from jenny's you know people the origin jenny's came out and people started using cotton in them instead of mesh and then you know they, they, then people realized there might have, might be a market for lung hit you know rdtas this is something I've tried to relate to a lot of the chinese manufacturers because I do have a lot of conversations with those guys uh, behind the scenes is 
don't go after what's hot now in vaping. If you've been vaping, I know you've been vaping a long time. I know Nick has been vaping a very long time, meaning him about the same time frame. Everything in vape comes in life cycles. You know, it was, it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. And I've tried to relate to these Chinese manufacturers. Don't worry about what's hot right now. Scratch that. Get on the curve to what's going to be hot next. And you can actually go back and trend. Look at everything in vaping and watch the life cycles and the repetitiveness of it and how things come back. And if you watch the stock market, it plays along the same way. Yeah. And trying to convince Chinese manufacturers of don't worry about what's hot right now. Go ahead and start building the next what's going to be hot next. Dude, that's like almost fighting a losing battle sometimes, you know. And I actually made the prediction that squonking would be dead by the end of 2018. It would be on the de de major decline. You know, because everything is squonk right now. So you got to start looking at the next hot product. You know, what's going to be hot next? Because there's only so many ways that you're going to be able to make a bottom-fed device, you know? And squonking's come in and out of style about three or four times already. Already. Yeah. You know, what are you doing, Stan? You're trying to give I us was... all high fives? High five to Stan, everybody. Uh, Chris, high five. Give a high five. Chris, high five. <laughs> no, um, I was I was fixing the <laughs> I was fixing the focus. I, I basically was going to say, do you know how hard – um when i was damn it do you know how hard it was to get uh uh my focus to work um times vape to i mean when when we had the design for the dreamer going like you were talking about you got to kind of see what's coming up next when i heard about that 30t battery we we're in the middle and basically we we're done designing the the prototypes don't even hold a 21700 and uh I wanted a 2700 and the 30T. I know we've talked about this before, but when I heard about that 30T, I immediately stopped everything. We need to make this work with a 21700. This 30T is going to be crazy good. And uh, and the 30T didn't even come out till. I mean, it just came out recently, and the the Dreamer came right, out in man. November. I was just I was so stoked that it worked out that way because I really, really, really wanted a, a high 35 amp battery to work at 21700 with that battery life in a mech mod i mean whoa you know and it just it it worked great so so let me ask the question to the panel what do y'all predict will be next in the vape industry what do you do or personally what do you think or what would you like to see come up next we would you like to see come back to make a you know good headway you know what i think is going to happen i think it's going to happen um not unregulated devices but more uh more constant voltage constant voltage basic mods i think that that's going to happen that's my own personal opinion like uh 4.2 i mean i i already saw one um all coming out on the market very soon um there's one and it's it's kind of gimmicky but a constant 4.2 voltage tube mod that's done with a chip and it's got a bottom firing switch. Like, I think that box mods, dual battery, series, or parallel doesn't matter. However, the chip is done with a constant 4.2 or constant 8 volts. I think that that's something that might actually happen. And who knows? That might be a, a good thing for the market. I would like it. I say bring back the old days, Provares and K funds. <laughs> that was like my first nice setup, Provari and yeah, K funds. But... <laughs> Demo, you want us to bring back the avocado 24? No. <laughs> Only if it has a fill hole. That can just stay. That can just stay gone. I literally, I've used probably, I don't know, 20 RDTAs. And I, I don't use that many because I dislike them almost all the time. Like I've rarely found one that I've enjoyed. The pyro was okay, you know, because I thought the wicking was decent. But other than that, like I just always have just the most trouble getting them to wick and work and vape nicely. And I just, uh, you know, so I just kind of gave up on them. Nick so Kaiser. What do you want to see next, Demo? What would you like to see come to be? Oh, man. I would like to see some more safety innovations for uh, for unregulated mods. I want to see some, I want to see mech mods coming with Delrin sleeves. I want to see, you know, a lot of these, you know, s every system that has just some more, more built-in safety features that don't compromise performance, right? Um, you know, I, we, we've done a great job. Pretty much every rebuildable that's coming out these days is, it has a pr protruding, protruding center 510 pin, you know, for the most part. Um, so we're, we're, you know, we're good on that. 
I would, I would, I would, I would love to see sub ohm tanks try to really up that right, so that if someone is, you know, uses a sub ohm tank on a mech mod, then it's not going to just blow up in their face, um, you know. And uh, I just, I just want to see some more passive safety stuff for unregulated stuff because I think. I've always had this fear that unregulated and mech stuff is just going to go bye bye one of these days, right? Because it's like eventually people are going to figure it out and they're going to be like, oh, it's these ones that are all causing the problems, right? Gone. And then I, I, I being a avid mech user, I would hate to see that. Um, How about yourself, Matt? What would you want to see, brother? Ooh, that's tough. Honestly, when it comes to mechs, I, uh, I thought that tube mechs would be dead by now not dissing on them i just i assumed but probably about in 2016 they were on their way out but um it's cool that they i wouldn't say necessarily made a comeback but they, they kind of did make a comeback over the last six months or so mm -hmm. i mean i would say um <clears throat> you know it's tough i mean like we, we talk about squonking dying but i still feel like there's a lot of room for innovation when it comes to squonking i mean obviously dual battery squonk mods but just the whole process of it you know the the bottle systems the the way to squonk i mean there's there's so many things that i think there could be some cool ideas to come out of that as far as like rebuildables i would like to see some more good top airflow rdas that you're not going to have problems with squonking um I've come up with a few designs. It's very, very hard to do you know, do something top airflow where maybe you want it to run down, you know, a chamber or something on the inside and then hit your coils from the sides. I know some people wouldn't like that because then if you purge, you know, it's gonna hit you in the face, but it's very hard to get a good draw from them uh, without it being super turbulent. So, but I mean, I think that, it, you know, like for example, the nudges, what's the biggest problem people have had that have said to me, oh, I over squawk, you know? And so I think that there's, there, it'd be cool to see some stuff like that. And also I think that companies should, when it comes to like sub ohm tanks and any kind of pre-made coil heads, the, the, the weak link with coil heads is cotton. It's, it's the cotton burning. That's, that's why they go out. I mean, mesh has helped that a little bit, but um, that's, that's usually what, why a, 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 a coil head goes bad is because the cotton ends up, uh, uh, burning, you end up get crisping a layer of it and it never wicks properly and whatever. So I would love to see companies doing more like, like what Horizon Tech's done and like try to innovate as far as different materials for those. But there's, there, you know, there's also, I think the reason they haven't done that as much is because the more quail heads you go through, the more money they make, you know. Right. So, there's not much motivation. I'd like to see fun. more innovation instead of imitation. I've always been a firm believer that Imitation kills innovation, you know, and right now with the mechs, I'm pretty surprised that some of the innovation has come out of a tube. You know, it's really surprising sometimes. I'd like to see more innovation across the board and more openness to maybe go back and revisit things that we were unable to perfect. You know, if RDTAs were such a pain in the tail, let's revisit RDTAs. What can we do to make them better? You know, and st what happens is these companies are starting to say, well, this is hot right now. Let's focus all our attention to making what's hot right now. Instead of saying, well, let's go back and revisit something before that didn't do so well. What can we do to make it better? The platform's already there. Let's just make it work and make it right. But I think sometimes there are those innovations, but we don't necessarily notice it because it's not a big jump. So one guy does a does an RDA like this, and the next guy makes that a little better because he implements maybe a different post system or whatever. And then the next guy makes that a little bit better. And then and so you know, like instead of like a jump from here to here, you see it like this. And those innovations happen, and products get incrementally better. But it's never just like mind blowing because the product right, right before it was kind of like it but this one's just a little better. Right, speaking to that, I, I, that's how I feel. In general, innovation happens very slowly, but every now and again, you get this big jump, right? And then everyone copies it, right? And then copy, 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 big jump, copy, 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 right? And so, you know, it's, it's all about finding what's the next big jump, right? That, that will improve our vape experience tremendously. And, you know, you know do we have design? any questions in chat? Because I've seen somebody say, yeah, we, we should. Nick, 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 yes, Nick. no. Nope. I wanted to say my actual predictions. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Predictions. I was just, you know, I, I started <laughs> off a whole other conversation. Matt, I agree with you. I want to see more innovation. 
with coil heads and different types of heating heating elements and wicking materials and that kind of thing. Um, I think you're absolutely right there. And I'm kind of glad the the mesh thing is going right now because I have faith in mesh. Like I've always kind of like kept that little bit of faith in mesh. It just has to be done right. And I think I think some people are doing it, starting to do it right. Done just right. Done just um, right. <laughs> the thing I want to see the industry go to is something like this. This is a old school Sony camcorder battery. Now this is much safer in my opinion than an 18650 because you don't see these blowing up every day. Now, if you not look at this, the lows that you're yeah, they're in. also not high output. But if you look at this, it's the same thing. Hey, they got this company called Squid Industries. They got this thing called the Double Barrel. It's almost identical to that. Holds two eighteen six fifty side by side. <laughs> but imagine if we could come up with one battery pack for all devices like this that is so much safer. Imagine that revolution. It would be pretty legit, and I'm surprised we haven't gone that way because we're still stuck with these 18650s. You know, maybe like, can we get like some Kevlar sleeves for our 18650s? That would be nice. <laughs> or, you know what even, I... Not even uh, Kevlar sleeves. I'm talking about like Delrin or some sort of inner sleeve that makes it so if you do have a torn battery wrapper, it makes yeah. it that much safer. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's when 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 Broadside came out with their mech and it had that Delrin sleeve. I was like, yes, that is exactly. That is that is what we need. Everything needs to have that. There is a design out there that I think has kind of been overlooked that I th don't think is done right, but I think I would love to see built upon is the lift the lift design where it automatically pulls the juice up with the vacuum. Uh, um, yeah. I would love to see that built upon. That would be fantastic. I think that that could be something. Um, you want it done right? Get a hold of Greg Stevens. I bet he can come up with a make it work. Why? Why? Why wouldn't I just do it myself? <laughs> yeah, amazing, Greg Stevens. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, no, but there's there's there was a question brought up by uh, Nick Kaiser. He said, and you know what? I I have my own opinion on this, but I'm just curious what your guys' opinion on this is. Is he says, um, how much innovation do you guys think could possibly be left? Infinite. Infinite. If, if, if people infinite said that when I started vaping, now. we yep. thought we were at the pinnacle three years ago. I mean, yep. that's that's just always how it is. I mean, you have to have the 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 you have to look <laughs> forward and just look at other industries yeah. too. I mean, it, how much better can it get than this? Well, I mean, a lot better. They can right. implant these chips into our brains, and we don't need Ooh. phones at all. If if Stay money if head. money oh, is crap. there, right? If money is there, if the money is there companies will try to innovate because they are going to try to compete, right? Everybody wants people to buy their product, right? So if they make a product that's way better than something that came out previously, then there's motivation in that alone, right? Like for just yeah. in the sake, for the sake of capitalism. If nothing I else. mean, there's no doubt, obviously, that we're in the best time that vaping's ever been in, which we should be because it's the present, you know? Right. And there's products out there that I, 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 I see products and I'm just like, I wish this was around when I started to uh, started uh, vaping I this mean, much creativity takes this hello, much creativity <laughs> romantic light <laughs> what oh my god innovation what is romantic about that uh, it's romantic it's red and uh. speaking of if the money was there the companies would make the better things don't forget fund the suit there we go fund the suit because none of this innovation can happen without keeping the industry around um let's go ahead and get a round of shout outs from nick while we do the shout outs um let's also get a lightning round going for matt let's ask questions from the chat why don't you guys if you have a question specifically for matt just start throwing them in there everybody come up with one question throw it in there don't make it like you know i mean i guess it's it's ask whatever just don't Short be answers, like though. don't be That's a butthead <laughs> about it Catch I guess. on your hot dogs what Ketchup or mustard Ketchup on your hot dog? Well, oh, hold on, let me do the shout outs first. <laughs> Damn, you're jumping the gun here. So so we're going to go ahead and do the, the the Instagram shout outs with Nick, and then we will jump into the lightning round. I'll start watching the chat. So the vaping underscore Doyle has posted his own vape stew buffet. Uh, we have Jared the vaping goat, proudly watching vape stew. We have 
Oh, I'm going to murder this one. Mirko Di Diciano. Mirko Diciano. Thank you. Uh, he has posted, he has or reposted our Di picture Di there. Diciano actually would be in, in Italian, Diciano. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I am terrible with names. Uh, <laughs> why, why, should, why am I doing this? I'm terrible with names. White on fire is watching the stew. Let's ask Matthew yeah. Caruthers. I'm going to screw this up on purpose. Uh, Ender's Oath, uh, or it's Ender's other game. <laughs> He's watching. Uh, we have Vaping with Ken. Get Matt to say, hashtag get Matt to say Fweef. We did that. You're welcome. <laughs> we have Mrs. Clownette, or Mrs. Period Clownette, if you want to follow her. And that's it. That's, that's going to do it. All right. So, I got a question. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You can do the questions. That's fine. Okay, sure. We got a question for Matt. This is the first one, and this is actually one that I want to know as well. I, I have a question to piggyback off of this. Um, Matt, what do you shoot your videos on? What camera do you shoot your videos on? Uh, I have a lot of cameras, but right now, I have a lot of cameras, but right now I shoot with the GH5. That's what I shoot with too. Um, all right. Red Fox asks, dream camera that you'd want to work with? Um, a red. Yep. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, it's, I, I could never justify, you know, they have payment plans and stuff like that, but it, like the entry level you, after it's all kitted out, it's going to be at least 25, 35 yep. grand. Um, yep. And I just can't justify that for YouTube, but I mean, I might move <laughs> to a cinema camera at some point, even like I, I'd love Canon the most. They're just, as far as their DSLRs, they haven't really innovated as fast as others, but I, I, I kind of want to see 200. I like really I'm liking the look of that uh, new black magic that just came out. That looks cool too. Um, it's got some limitations, but I they have great color science. I, I might it's cheap enough and I have a lot of micro four thirds lenses already. I might yep. pick it up and just return it if I don't like it. Yep, yep. Cool. All right, let's see here. What's what your uh, favorite MTL RT, RTA that's come out so far? I know that's uh, hard one and interviewers hate it, but we got that question there. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. I, honestly, I still have to just say K funds because I, it, it's just nostalgic for me at this point. And then I, I just, I bought my first K fund when I was broke and I freaking saved for that thing. And when I got it, I treated it like it was, you know, gold. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we're, you know, it's got a little scratch on it and stuff. And so, you know, I'm not saying that it's the best out there, but for me, it's still my favorite because it, it holds a place in, in my heart. Go okay. ahead, Demo. Uh, oh, no, I see. I'm just, um, all right, Matt, any new products coming out f this year from you? Ooh. Um, yeah, most likely. I'm working on a few. Okay. I mean, Can you give us any kind goes, of little I'm, I'm in prototype phase on two different products with okay. two different companies right now. All right. Uh, Matt, what are you looking forward? What are you looking forward when you get to 500k? I don't understand that question. Um, Having 500k, being closer to 1 million. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see here. Matt, do you prefer the K fund or the Russian 91? That's a really old one. Oh yeah, I did have a Russian 91 as well. I mean, still the K fund. Yep. 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 All right. Let's see here. All right. Mustard or ketchup on your hot dogs? Both. Mayonnaise. Cream cheese. <laughs> Cream, cheese Cream cheese. Cream cheese on hot dogs. Like the I grew up in, in the Seattle area and they like the stands outside of bars in, in downtown and they serve them with cream cheese and onions and shit. Oh, it's so good. Nick would be proud. All right, sorry, this was, I was putting something in chat there real quick. Um, let me see here. Let's see if we've got other things here. Sometimes it's just tough to. to I find. asked a couple of questions, Demo. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, where, where are you? <laughs> I don't see your questions. God damn it. You oh, wait, 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 there we go. Matt, any vape expos planned for the rest of the year? I'm probably going to go to ECC in August. Um, we might go to the Vapor Expo UK in August. October. Right now, that's I think that's it. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let's see here. We've got Matt say a name, and how do I get? Let me let me retype this. I'm looking at it right now. Yep. All right. Good luck. Wolfish Schlegel Steinhausenbergerdorf. Wolfish Schlegel Steinhausenbergerdorf. 
close. <laughs> Not bad. Very you get close. Every guest to say his name. That's the best thing ever. Yeah, because it's just it's just amazing. <laughs> I, actually, Bergedorf. <laughs> I might actually get a chance to meet you if you want to ECC because I think I'm gonna yes, think I I'm gonna go. So that would be cool. Nice. Guys, yeah. Have that, have I haven't been to an ECC a for a few years, so I figure it's about that time again. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I think Times Vape might be going, so that would be really cool. Oh, the company that never sent me a Dreamer to review? <gasps> oh, they never sent you a Dreamer, <laughs> Matt? Oh Let's see here. Gosh. Shots fired. Matt, do you still have your juice line? Because I loved V's ADV. I feel personally attacked. I just must say that. I, 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 I love you. I, I don't. <laughs> um, it's being sold in a few shops, but it, I'm not promoting it anymore. It's it's not really being distribu distributed anymore. Okay. I never got to try it. Let's see here. Um, I think, uh, unless I'm missing it. Oh, okay. Uh, what coil, uh, this, this is such a broad question. Matt, what coil do you vape on ohm type and diameter? That, I feel like oh. that highly depends on what you're, what you're vaping though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, three, three millimeter usually is my go-to unless it's some, you know, RTA build deck where that's just tiny. But, you know, a, a dual coil build deck like the Zeus dual or something. Ah. Um, the uh, like in a single coil RDA, like in both of these, I have just some different variations of staple coils. I, that's what I like. So <laughs> Twisted asked a question for you earlier for me that I wanted to just get on again. Your Serpent SMM sold very, very well. And I personally feel you that one product saved a company i know you probably think well oh, probably not probably not man the numbers don't lie you know I, I firmly believe that that was that one product not only saved that company but made them do an about face in their marketing approaches and the quality of products that they were putting out do you feel the same way or do you not feel that way? Do you feel that, you know, it was just, a I, I, guess, I guess I just don't know, you know, like I don't have my pulse on or my finger on the pulse of, of, of the industry always super well. I mean, I know, I know numbers that did pretty well. And uh, I know that I get a lot of people that tell me they, they like it and still use it. And so, you know, to me, like, like even though there's people that complained and said it was too turbulent and stuff like that, that was a product that was totally designed for myself. The only other product I had done before that was the was the theorem that I did with Jabo, and I didn't get my way on everything. You know, it was kind of a collaboration thing. There were some things I didn't want on there that he did and stuff like that. And so, the the Serpent SMM was like absolutely for me by me. And, you know, I, I loved dual side airflow RDAs. And at the time there weren't, uh, any like bottom feeding, uh, dual, uh, dual side airflow, uh, single coil RTAs. And so that's, that's what I wanted. Gotcha. Well, that's a good thing, man. I know one, I've heard it many times over one of our fellow Stooge members, uh, Sammy Nitro has attested that is still his favorite favorite to date like that is it ranks up there in one of my favorite rtas of all time it ranks as one of his as well man congratulations on that yeah, and the that success out. of the nudge 22 man like uh, the 24 i'm not just super big fan. i enjoyed the 24 but when the 22 came out i was like uh where's my 24 i'm not using it but <laughs> i like that style of being able to wind your coil either way and be able to install it and utilize it and it be a damn good vape all the way Thank you for what you've done because well, I see the thanks company for the love, I fully support wholeheartedly. Knee pads Absolutely. my ass. That's not knee pads. Right. That's the truth. We got, we got, you know, uh, if you release that uh, hex home, you know, we could be on your knee pads. Yeah. Well, is, it, is, there any, <laughs> is there any news on the, the Daily Vape yeah, TV the hex home, Nick? Demo, can you read my question, please? <laughs> okay. I was going to read this one first, but I'll, uh, yeah, I was just going to, okay. I think Matt uh, would like a Daily Vape TV hex home. Yeah, um, <laughs> Matt. Any chance you're re reviewing the notch? No, reviving. Reviving. Oh, reviving. Sorry, I thought you were okay. Yeah, reviving the notch, the notch coil. No. Oh, R.I.P. Notch. I mean, all right. That's that's Wismex baby. So it's like, if they want to, if they want to revive it, that's that's their call. 
Right. Okay. So then let's, being that we've got 10 minutes left of the show, should we just do one more and then be done? Go ahead and do uh, one more and then we will right. do our, our, yeah. All right. So this last one I think is good. Tips for smaller reviewers to grow their channels. Uh, consistency. It kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're just looking for growth, then you want to try to look, you know, look to the future and try to figure out what products that are coming out that you think are going to be popular and review those. Um, you know, a, a big part of it is just working YouTube's algorithm also, but mm -hmm. obviously the content's got to be good, you know, cause you can get, a, you can maybe have a video that goes kind of viral, but if the video shit, then people aren't going to be coming back. So there's, there's multiple different facets to it, but don't try to do everything all at once, you know, as far as video quality and, and, and stuff like that. Just try to make consistent videos, be yourself, and try to make a video that you would want to watch. I get a lot of shit for cuts, for doing a lot of cuts in my videos. Oh, I do them all the time. But me personally, I would rather have cuts in a video than have a bunch of long pauses and have that video be, you know, twice as long. So Shoot, man. Just, Make what you want to see. Cuts are like a feature that you come to my videos to see. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like rip troopers up in my videos. I'm just like every, you know, every few words, no, every, every sentence practically. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do like four or five in a row just because I think it's funny. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just something, you know. Hey. I've made some pretty iffy cuts in my, uh, in, in some of my videos. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get creative sometimes, like especially if you flub yeah. your words or say oh, yeah. something wrong. You have to like cut certain gaps and then maybe cut a word out here and then replace the sentence and move yeah. it around and stuff. It's Can't just... tell you how many times I've cut out. Um, um, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> find the pause I, between the I um and my, cut it. I, I cut my sews together. Yep, yep, <laughs> I do that too. Um, that's actually pretty smart. Yep, yep, I do that too. Um, the uh, yeah, no, I, I I think ultimately for me, shooting takes an hour, editing takes like four. So it's like it's always like, Ink you know. Daddy said, no cuts, give us thirty minute reviews. No, oh <laughs> no no no. You don't want to look right. at my ugly mug for thirty minutes. Uh, <laughs> Boring enough look... in ten minutes. Yeah. Oh wait, I have a question for Matt. Comments too, folks. Let's let's be civil, folks, man. Let's I, be I have one. I have one last question for Matt, and it's a burning question that everyone in chat has been wondering all night long. Where's V? Where's V, Matt? She's actually watching movies in the other room. She was supposed to work tonight, but she got put on call. Oh, there you go. V's Very break cool. time. Sweet yeah. Deal. Yep. 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 Um. Let's see here. I'm scared to put uh to put mrs stan on all right let's uh let's get to the golden list watch her instead. yes we should let's do this thing let's go the the this go? or that question of the week oh, oh yeah. wait you said golden list sorry wow stan i was reading i i okay yes the golden list basically the golden list is our way of combating is not the right word basically our way of putting a positive spin on the blacklist basically what we do is we put a company doesn't matter vape company um juice hardware uh you know accessory just anybody or anything involved with the vape community that we think should be on the golden list puts a positive light on the industry and every week we add one per person to the list this list can be found on the vape stew crew group on <laughs> yeah. okay. basically this can be found on the vape stew crew uh facebook group and hopefully one of our mods can throw that in oh look there it is right there nice job vapor swagons um the facebook group and you can check out the golden list there as well as what's the stooge crew.com is that what it is stooge crew.com yeah. um mm -hmm. you can also check out the golden list there so i'll go ahead and go first this week Basically, what I wanted to do is, I love what they did with the um, the fun the suit. I'm I'm not even gonna question it. I'm throwing naked 100 on. Fifty thousand oh, yeah. dollars towards fun the suit that gets you a free pass to me, man. Absolutely, Demo. So, are you on the list right now? Uh, no, I'm not. I got it. You got it. Okay, perfect. Yep. Uh, naked 100. So naked 100s on. Um, let's hear what Joel has to say. Who I'm going to add on the list. I uh, don't know if I've already added them or not. Uh, 
Round Z liquid cones, squares. I don't think I've added them, have I? Nope. I'm going to add those guys to the list, man. Good juices, good people over there. Ivan, damn good dude. <sighs> Labeling's right. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. I don't agree with the cone on this bottle that I picked up of all bottles, but it's still bland enough to, to draw, get the point of what, you, what he's got, you know? So I'm going to put cones, rounds, e-liquid on the list. Absolutely. And I'm also going to call him out too. Cut the check, rounds. <laughs> on the suit. Boom. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like that. I actually like that. So uh, uh, why don't you pass it off, Joel? I'm going to pass it off to Matt. Why not? We should probably explain what the golden list is to him. I have, yeah, thanks for prepping me, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, the, go, the golden list is I'm our sorry about that, Matt. On the, uh, I on should the, have said our take on, the, on the, the reverse of the blacklist, right? So finding companies that we believe are positive to the industry and, and either by donating or by, you know, committing to non-child friendly branding or, you know, positive, positive, having a positive impact on our industry. Another just right mindset. Um, well, I mean, the juice I'm using, I think that uh, they've got some pretty nice labels. This is from Gaslight Vapor Supply. And uh, they seem like they've always been cool people. Um, also, this Tea Time brand. There but, you go. I mean, I, I could have come up with something really good, but, you know, you guys kind of fucked me on this. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. You know what? It's actually... Uh, it's kind of fun when we do it on the spot anyway, but it's, if I get uh, invited back next time, I'll come up with something really good. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. We probably should uh, give a little heads up. And I think that. you guys should take it to the next level. Like each one of you has to get one of these golden list names tattooed on yourselves once a year. Actually once a year, <laughs> once a year. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, maybe silverback makes their donation a hundred grand. I'll be on it. Say what? Naked 100 upster donation to 100 grand. I'll get the tattooed on me. Oh. Kind of a cool logo. You put naked 100 right up, right above your junk or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm known for showing it off all the time. Hell yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Up the up the donation to 100 grand. Sure thing, no problem. Let's see if we have. Oh no, I know exactly who I'm going to add to uh, to the golden list. Well, Adam. Squid Industries. Squid it's Industries. already been added. Shots has already been added. I don't see yes, it here. they have. They've been added last yeah. week, I think, or two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Really? I don't see yeah. it. Yeah. So you got to add another one. Okay, because I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't see them on here. Um. All right. So if that's the case, Johnny on the spot. Who's gonna be? Well, see, that's that was my choice, man. Dun, 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 see, dun. now I don't have now I don't have an answer, man. Dun, 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 mm, I. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> it was going to be Squid Industries. I'll just do another one for Squid Industries. You know what, guys? Whatever. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Where did Nick go? Did he just Nick decide not to, to do the golden list? No, Nick had to pee. Nick had to pee. I just did. I just went ahead. It takes 30 seconds. I just did a donation to uh, the fund the suit. So it, it it takes 30 seconds if you want to do it. Put a dollar in there. A dollar well, I'm not getting takes. Lucid RDA tattooed on me. Well, that's not what I put. I put my personal name. So, Keith Stanley. No. Hey, hey! Don't call me by my dad name. <laughs> okay, that's for well, my kids. I guess my uh, should we go to the this or that question? Yes, I mean, we, we can always come back. We can always come back to Nick later um, for his golden list submission. All right, I have this or that question ready to go. Right? right. Every week, Matt, what we do is a this or that question, and this is designed for you to be on the spot. Okay. We we come like up that. with we come up with a this or that question. You have to answer this or that, or one or the other, and you have to explain why. Okay. So we'll all answer the question. Demo's got it this week. Why don't you shoot, Demo? All right. Would you rather lose all of your money in valuables? Or all of the pictures you have ever taken. Ooh, that's a hard one. We'll start with we'll start with Matt on this one. <sighs> it depends on the time of month because sometimes I'm really broke. But <laughs> <laughs> um, that's tough, man. That I liked this game when you guys were first talking about it. 
Mm, yeah. these, <laughs> these are hard, hard ones, man. I, 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 we don't, because we don't, I we think, do. okay, here's my reasoning here. I think about the fact that like I have real, I'm not really worried about some of my artsy pictures or whatever. It's the pictures of my kid, right? And so that's what I, that's what I would not want to lose. But at the same time, if I lost all my money and valuables, I wouldn't be able to take care of my kid. So, which is more important than the pictures. So I, I had have to say pictures, but it would be really, really sad. Yep. I'll go ahead and answer. I would agree completely. I, you know, I can't, uh, can't keep the lights on, can't keep the heat on, can't keep all that stuff. If I lost all that money and, and whatnot, you know, even though that's not like the main, my main life goal, it's, uh, you know, it would have to be that, you know, luckily the most valuable pictures to me are of my parents that I didn't take. Right. And so I don't, that those don't qualify, you know, both of my parents are gone. So, um, you know, so I would be okay with losing all the pictures. I wouldn't be okay with it, but it would, it would have to be. So what about you, Joel? Man, it's a simple one for me. I am going to say my monetary gains because I've had absolutely nothing and have been homeless and I've been at the top of the world with more money than I'd ever thought I'd ever see in my lifetime. Uh, the pictures, man. There's pictures of loved ones that I've taken that are no longer with us today. And that's the only thing I can look back on and see their face and see that relive that moment in time, you know, it captured a moment in time in which you can never get back. You know, you can just relive that memory again. Uh, partook in some activities growing up as a teenager and made my memory not so well. So it's good to reflect on some of the pictures sometimes and say, hey, you know what? I remember that day now. You know, I remember where we're at when we took that picture and when I took that picture. So I'm going to say monetary, man. Monetary don't mean nothing to me. Hell, I can go back to being homeless again. You know, but if I got my pictures, I'm good. See, I don't mind being broke myself too. It just changes things for with me with my kid. I would break my heart seeing my kid go without, you know? Mm-hmm. I've made it. I've made it. I've lost it and made it, made it and lost it. You know, I, I'm a hustler. I'm gonna get out there and make it again. You know, take it, take it all from me monetary wise. I'll go make it again. Can't yeah. stop. <laughs> all right. So Nick is back. So we need, we need, first of all, we need a golden list submission from, uh, from Nick. And then we're going to ask you the, this or that question. Okay. My golden list submission is sick boy e-liquid. Uh, They've always, always, always had responsible branding and they're, you know, they're, they're slightly offensive. Yeah, there you go. There you go, Joel. <clears throat> they're slightly offensive, you know, with flavors such as your mom and uh, M MBYC for those of you that know that. <laughs> but otherwise, I mean, I, I don't think they're nearly as offensive as the ones that infringe on copyright and trademark and uh, everything else that these terrible blacklisted e-liquids do but uh it, i think sick boys almost the opposite of that so that's my nomination for this week and uh this or that okay would you rather lose all of your money and valuables <laughs> or all of the pictures you have ever taken <clears throat> um Ooh, well to the photographer come, yeah i was gonna say coming from a <laughs> photography background i would gladly lose all of well okay so here's the catch-22 with this question because yeah. all of my valuables hold all of my photos so mm. Leave it it's to kind me. of a <laughs> it's kind of a damned if i do damned if i don't um i'm still gonna go with money and, and valuables and all that because at the end of the day that shit doesn't matter does not matter memories me. you will always have your memories the, the photographs of your mind there you go um so yeah, I, I don't care if I'm broke. I don't care if I'm rich. I mean, I'm currently broke, so there's that. But uh, <laughs> you know, um, no matter what, I'll always have my friends. I'll always have my family, my health, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go with just. I'd rather just lose all my valuables and and have all my photographs. If it means I get to keep my photographs on a memory card or something like that, I'll take it all day. All right, Stan. <laughs> Um, sorry, I was monitoring the chat there. Um, <clears throat> there's some weird stuff going on in the chat tonight, and uh, I just yep. hope everybody's being respectful to one another. Um, yes, please. But, however, all of my valuables and money or all of my pictures. <sighs> Does pictures include video? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah let's, let's say, yeah, sure. Because I take more video than I do pictures. Honestly, I don't have that many pictures. Um 
Like I have a ton of pictures like on social media, but we don't store a ton of pictures anymore. Uh, when my wife, a uh, little, little story real quick. Sorry. Um, when my wife and I first got together, she was moving out of her apartment and she had so many days to do it. Well, the apartment complex went into the apartment and cleared it out wrongfully before it was time through all her photos, everything she ever had her birth certificate, everything away. So she's been through that and I have no idea what it felt like. I mean, I saw her and I know it upsets her, but I have no idea what it felt like. Um, I really can't imagine not being able to go back and look at pictures of like my kid sitting on my grandfather's lap or my grandmother's lap. I mean, they're not around anymore. Um, and being able to tell the stories of like, Hey, this is, this is your family. Like when I was growing up, it was really cool always to see me as a baby with family members. I never actually met, you know, so in learning kind of about those people and stuff. So, uh, as hard as it would be trying to figure it out, I'd have to say I'd want to keep all the memories and pictures just so that the kids know where they came from, you know, uh, that's that's a really hard question because you could always buy more cameras with money, you know. You could always buy, uh, you know. You 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 have to like Matt said, it's really hard to see your kid go without. Um, but that's a really serious question and a really hard one for me to answer. But I would, I'd probably go with pictures, uh, but not real sure. So, getting all uh, quiet and deep voiced and serious there. Um, Basically, what we're going to do now is we've done the this or that question. That was a little a little more serious than we normally do, but I appreciate it, Demo. That was a good question and a hard one to answer. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about Fun the Suit, and Fun the Suit is a fantastic, fantastic way to get funds to those that are working in the lawsuit against Big Tobacco and the FDA. Um, so... Please go and put a buck, two bucks, whatever you want on there. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm sure everybody here would greatly appreciate it. Um, we've all donated or will be donating, I'm sure. And uh, it's it's the, the link is in the description. As well as join the Facebook group, Vape Stew Crew, for updates and fun and information. You can also get on the Discord there. Um, that would be fantastic. Why don't, is there any shout outs or anything you want to do, Matt? Anything you want to talk about before we get out of here? We're going to do our final go round. Well, shout out to you guys for having me on. Absolutely. You guys are cooler than I thought you'd be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, seriously, right? I'm kidding. Jeez, I'm kidding. Man. It, was a, it was a good time. We had some good uh, conversation. If you I, end I up with enjoy a, these, kinds of, these kinds of formats. Yeah. If you end up Topical with a kick me man. sign on your back at ECC, it wasn't me. <laughs> Hey, as long as I get a dreamer before then, you, you know. You come see me. You come see me at ECC or come see Times Vape, and I will make sure you get a dreamer. Make sure you get a stacked one too. Or hell, you know what? You know what? What's May, June, July? Hey, you what? Don't wait till August. Why? He's got some LEs, Matt. Make sure he gives you one of them limited edition ones, Matt. Uh, no, I can't. I can't do the. I can't do the LEs. There's only thirty in existence. When, when when we see each other at ECC, we'll do a product trade, and I'll give you whatever I have going at the time, and and we can swap. Ooh. No, forget that. I'm gonna send you a dreamer tomorrow. So, um, Dude, I was just honestly, I was just flipping you shit. I, I know you were. I know you were, but I want you to have one. So I'm gonna be sending you a dreamer tomorrow. So make sure you give me that information. Um, right. However. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else you want to talk about? Maybe your your other channel, other than your vaping channel, you want to talk about, like promo um, yeah, any if you of guys that. Want to check out the Matt and V channel? Feel free. We haven't had any uh, content up there for about three months, but th there's some things in the works for that channel, including a podcast. So hopefully, uh, really try and like within the month, the next month, uh, to start being regular on that again. It's um, always tough being regular. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm tell you, it gets harder the older you get. The yep. more cheese you eat. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm from the Midwest. Cheese is my life, so I know. Well, uh, since cheese is your life, shout why don't out you to get... cheese. Shout, shout out, out to cheese. cheese. <laughs> shout out to cheese. <laughs> and in the in the um in the sense of being cheesy, Dima, why don't you give us your uh, your little segue or your little outro and uh, maybe our Demo Dad joke of the day.
Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, I've got one. I've got one for you all. Okay. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Demo with Demo Vapes. If you're not familiar with me, I have a YouTube channel here. I actually have reviewed the Serpent SMM for Matt if he wants to check it out. Um, anyway, um, beyond that, I have an Instagram at Demo underscore Vapes, Twitter at Demo Vapes, and a Facebook group, Demo's Vape Lounge. Demo apostrophe S Vape Lounge. Go check those things out. And I will actually be hosting a real after show this time. So we will be doing a real after show on the Demo Vapes YouTube channel. I know it's been a while. So, um, all right, the Demo Dad joke of the day. Get ready. What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know. What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag's a big plus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we got Matt to smile with that yeah. one. <laughs> Definitely a dad joke. Yeah, absolutely. It's a thing. So oh. anyway. <laughs> All right, Mr. So Just Right. All right. Let's give it to Nick. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. My the shout out. Thing. <clears throat> so pretty much uh fund the suit first and foremost. Fund the suit. Get those mother loving comments into the FDA. And if my wrenches could poke those, uh, po poke, post those links. Yeah, Thank poke you. Poke the links. Poke the links. Just, just poke them. And well, if you're on a phone, that works. But anyways, um, shout out to Stan for picking up Blaz and giving me a, my own coupon code, uh, lucidrda.com uh, for Blazy Liquid, uh, available in all four flavors and zero three and six milligram. And the coupon code is Daily Vape TV for 15% off all Blazy liquid. So make sure you get your Blaz there. Um, sell it out quick because, Stan, I want to see a reorder in the next couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Matt for being here because Matt's awesome. And uh, we, we actually got to talk about cameras for like two minutes, yeah. which I know Matt loves talking about. I'm a camera nerd, too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, but yeah, and thank all of you guys for being here. There you go. That's my shout outs. Beautiful. And I'm going to pass it off to Joel. All right, folks. First and foremost, again, fun the suit. Get your damn comments in. Nobody's going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. Um, thank you all for being here. Matt, thank you for being here again. Enjoyed having you on. Welcome back anytime you like. Thank everybody in chat for keeping it civil and acting like adults. I greatly appreciate that. Um, Sign off like I always do, man. If at any given point in time you've ever felt like you're not a somebody, I want you to know you are a somebody in somebody's eyes, and that somebody is me. I absolutely love every single one of you guys. Y'all stay blessed. Mr. Just Right One checking in and checking out at the same damn time. All right, before, before Stan goes, I just want to remind all of you, send your donation confirmations to demovapes at gmail.com, and I will match up to $500 of your donations as well. Do it. Let's get that money out there. Very right. good. Fun the Go suit. Hashtag fun the suit. I want, I want to challenge all the Stooges and everybody watching still that if <clears throat> you're on social media, Instagram or whatever, and you see a company that you think is, you know, should be held accountable. Don't, don't give, don't attack them. Don't anything like that. I just want you to just leave hashtag fun the suit, hashtag fun the suit, and maybe a link. Um, I would love to see a bunch of hashtag fund the suit on different uh, juice company, Instagram comments, um, Facebook, you know, whatever. That would be great. That'd be fantastic. And that's a pretty simple challenge, in my opinion. Um, hold, hold, let's hold, let's hold everybody accountable. So hashtag fund the suit. Uh, we're not going to be mean and we're not going to be crazy and we're not going to attack them. But hey, why don't you guys hashtag fund the suit? That's a good comment. Um, so basically, lucidrda.com. Uh, dreamers and uh stacks etc etc there's also half moon mod tips now and battery cases for all your safety needs so check that out um also a blazy liquid like nick said uh you guys have been fantastic i greatly appreciate you guys being here every friday uh, i see a lot of the same names rolling through chat and i really think it's awesome you guys are very loyal to the show and i hope we can keep bringing on Great guests like Matt here. Um, great content for you guys to keep on watching and, and participating with us. I really like the interaction with the chat. Matt, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me, buddy. Um, it's been very fantastic of you. I like picking your brain about things, and I hope to do it in person very soon. 
uh, Vape Stew Crew on Facebook. Go check it out. It's a fun, fun uh, Facebook group as well as there's also the Discord link there where you can get on the Discord chat server and we are always on Discord um, in and out of the day and you can talk directly with us, directly with any of the other Stooges. Those guys are crazy. They have a lot of fun. There's voice chat. There's video chats. I mean, it and it's run by the Stooges mostly. We do moderator stuff, but they run the stuff and it, they are great at it. It's fantastic. Um, you guys... Once again, thank you very much for being here. What uh, Nick is pushing the wall. <laughs> I hope to see you here next week. There's a lot more content coming up. I'm getting my streaming setup done for DSLR streaming, and um, I've got videos to make, so I will be doing that this weekend. Got a little time. Keep an eye out. You guys stay safe. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And remember, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Vape on, friends.